Good evening. Everywhere I go on this island, it seems to me I find a generous in. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> See, it's a lot scarier when there's no motor set. We have a bargain. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. Do you feel the pain? Always be young. Movies, take a few notes. His entire work consists of violence, all the time obsessed with the issue of violence. Mayhem, gouging out of eyes, autopsies on the stage. Come. It is time to keep your appointment. Evening chat, welcome to our Black Mirror stream. It is a double feature horror show episode 144, getting kind of close to that significant 150 that I have no idea what we're going to cover for. Maybe give us some suggestions. That's always helpful. This is YouTube after all. It does help to uh, get a little interaction. If you want this uh, channel to grow, if you want this stuff spread around, you do have to interact with it. I'm afraid that's uh, that's the way it goes around here. But luckily, while you're doing that, you can uh, give suggestions for episode 150. Um, as uh, <laughs> as some people can attest to, we we can do pretty much anything that's suggested, even if we really, really shouldn't. Right, Mergu? <laughs> oh, he's he's demurring. Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> he knows what I'm Got talking me a about. Bad moment here. <laughs> yeah, we can do almost anything. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. What's it? What's the name of that? Is it the Dark Pooniverse? Is that what they're it, calling it? I think it's just called the Pooniverse. <laughs> Pooniverse. The second Terrible. one's out. Apparently, I was I was streaming last week, and uh, one of the guys on stream said that it was. Uh, I think it was limited release. Uh, at the time so it might be it might be out out now i don't know i'd have to check but we'd have to we we've got to cover it, it, it it's criminal that we're not covering films like that on this channel <laughs> oh i don't know i don't know i think there's like 50 or 60 more anthologies we've got to go through first you know well, just, just adding well, well technically well it doesn't add to an anthology but i mean we've got a whole universe of films to cover come on come on it's a whole new world. Come on, new there's horizon. the whole full moon features selection to go through too. <laughs> Come on, full moon features. Why does that ring a bell? Full moon productions, Puppet Master. Um... Oh, <laughs> Puppet Master, of course. <laughs> that that series go to some extremely weird places. Um, yeah. Also, hello all the regulars. Hello Mima. Good to Mima on time. My goodness. My goodness, good to see you. Also, Dr. Prepper, good to see you. I saw Doll face around. I saw Adam Loves Horror, good to see you. We've got Wholesome Wife who is in the chat. Thurman Trees, good to see you. And hopefully, you know, if you're around, say hi. We always like you saying hi. It's always good. Drop it in the chats, drop it in the comments. It's all good. And of course, if you haven't already, please do like the stream. You know what we need to do. Uh, it's YouTube, that's how it works. Um, uh, you know, on, on the note of shilling, I'll, I'll, I'll just do a quick note here. Um, it's been busy on the channel recently. You'll have noticed the Blockbuster series is dropping. Um, the Algo is absolutely brutalizing it. Terrible. Stamping it down. My series can't breathe. But you guys, anyone who's seen it, what you've been saying about it has been absolutely lovely. And I want to thank you for that. There have been so many nice comments, so many nice DMs about it. I, I want to thank you. It's an indulgent passion project. Uh, and I really appreciate uh, the feedback on that. So do keep watching. Part four is going to release this Saturday. And along with it, I believe the film commentary is for Black Christmas from 1974. So if you're a member You've already had access to that for a while. Um, so I might treat you and give you a preview of episode five and beyond. But episode four is getting into the topic of who are the mega brain geniuses making these wonderful decisions from the helm of the Starship blockbuster? Who is coming up 
with the amazing strategies that is making Blockbuster number one. Are you detecting a slight bit of hyperbole and, and uh, sarcasm in my description? Yeah. You'll have to watch the episode and find out. Um, it's also got one of the weirdest openings that we've got in there. And uh, I'll just say uh, thank you so much to Waifu for um, humoring me. Um, watch it. Watch the intro. You will see what I am getting up to. It is the most indulgence. That is dropping on Saturday, part four of seven. I will also create a playlist for you so you can catch up and enjoy it all in one go. Um, that is everything on that front. Uh, that's my shilling. Um, before we get a little further, I'll say who's on with me. It is a horror anthology stream, so we obviously are joined by Murgut. Hello, Murgut. Greetings. This is glad to have you back. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is going to be a good one. I, I'm looking forward to your feedback because I, I want to ask you about your history with it because you kind of surprised me before we went live. Um, <laughs> But not just Mergut, we also are joined by fan favourite. His flow is Novocaine. His bars is Hurricanes. Katrina, he's got a Helicane Mac in the Melon range. Hop out and shells exchange. I can't read the rest of these lyrics on YouTube. So we'll just say, it's TCG. I have no idea who that was. Really? Was that... Not, not Kanye. Uh, if I... Oh, I can't say this on YouTube. <laughs> type it, it in the private chat and I'll see if I can. All right, I'm going to type you a clue in the private chat and I bet you'll oh, get clue. it. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, we'll see if that does it. Uh, S -A -D no H. Oh, okay. Uh, that was not DMX, surely? No, no, no. Think of our prime ministers. <laughs> What? What? Cameron. <clears throat> oh, Cameron. Oh, right. Dipset. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. the, so the song Get Him Daddy. Right. I, I didn't really listen to much Cameron. Uh, Cameron no, or, uh, neither did I, but yeah. I saw it posted on Twitter and it's been in my head. I can't get it out. It wasn't a uh, white girl po um, posting those lyrics uh, in tribute for a slain friend. I, I hope not. No, because, no. Uh, very risky to do that. Mm. That'll that'll get lots. Of, that'll sort of Chelsea Russell all the jimmies, and you don't exactly. want to risk that. Yeah, <laughs> especially if they're Scottish. Given all the uh, fun that's going on up there at the moment, I pity you fools. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, good evening, chat. How you doing? Uh, always remember, sorry, Maverick, because we were talking about the uh, Rotten Tomato scores for Blood and Honey Two. Just so you know, it's got an eighty-one percent audience score from our show. Uh, the critics Ooh. gave it a 52 though so well well done critics that that's me no literacy. no <laughs> we have to, no 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 we have to side with the audience on this one yeah audience called this one let's see <laughs> oh so ken jensen has come in has not seen a single episode of black mirror okay Woo. uh ken we are we're going to be riotously spoiling three episodes um if you're up for that, that's cool. You know, there are so many that we're not spoiling is the way to think of it. Maybe listening to this will give you an idea of whether Black Mirror is your sort of thing, but we'll see how it goes. Um, TCG, uh, oh, by the way, um, links to uh, both these wonderful people are in the description. Um, and I know uh, Mergu, good follow on Twitter. And, and TCG, you've been doing the streams again. I've been doing the streams again. Yeah, some Ace Attorney stuff. Uh, I haven't had time to do one in the over the last couple of days, but I will aim to rectify that in the next couple of days uh, myself. Um, yeah, so how it's working is I'm, I'm doing them on my main channel and then moving the VODs over to the, to, to the second channel. So they're not staying up for very long. But if you're subscribed to my second channel, That Crime Guy Live, um, and, you miss, and you happen to miss the live... Then, if you are interested in that specific series, which is the Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations uh, game, then you can catch them once they're re-uploaded. It takes forever for YouTube to actually let me download them, which is strange. But, yeah, I'm getting them up as quickly as I can. Nice. Nice. It's a, the Ace Attorney world is, is a weird one for me. 
Um, Love it. So the glimpses of it I get are sort of... Oof. I've got to start on that other project of actually doing the uh, the scary games. I've got to start yes. going on that. Yeah, I've got to do. I've got. To, I've, I'm going to get back on that as well. Uh, the guys were recommending uh, Alien Isolation. Oh God. Yeah, it's on sale at the moment as well. So. Oh no. What I yeah. probably do, I might do a, a members only stream, so where you can do the traditional like YouTuber playing a horror game. I might just, <laughs> I'll do that as a members only because I think I will probably shriek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come I'm on not, if, if if i could do it if i if i can do it as a public stream you can too we'll see how we go we'll see how Trust we go me. But without further ado um yeah. i'll say um i don't i didn't do a topic for this section for this one because this could be a lot this could go long i'll see how we do we want to stay on the good side of um we want to stay on the good side of super nanny and uh you know i've been putting out long film commentaries so i'm already sort of in the bad books by the way kudos to everyone who came along for the film commentary for the shining i was nervous about that one i'm so glad you guys liked it so chuffed about that right we should we should get into this um so this is our horror anthology series hi to everyone just dropping in by the way 11 minutes in we start talking about the topic that's actually fit that's brisk in EFAP terms. Right. So um, we are now up to, I believe, 2013 in our horror anthology series. We started off in the 1940s. And there was a 1925 German one, but I spared you guys that. Um, we've been on a long road here. We are getting dangerously present. It is getting contemporary up in here. Black Mirror is still running they have another series out next year okay so sorry another season out next year so this is still going but i really wanted to cover black mirror because black mirror is is not just say the latest iteration of horror anthologies it has some really quite interesting innovations big changes to the horror anthology genre um some of them might not sound big, but if you've been doing the whole journey with us, you will see how big they are. So um, they don't have any introduction. They are standalone episodes. There isn't really a host. There's a bit of a move towards a connected universe, but not really. I, I, too much is made of that. We'll discuss that a bit later. But the main thing they did was a change in the format of the large anthology story. That is a major innovation. And unfortunately, we've already covered it. And I'm talking about the Christmas special episode, uh, White Christmas. That is the end of season two. They did a Christmas special. Now, what am I talking about in terms of innovation? Uh, I'm talking about we moved from basic kind of standalone anthologies where things are just sort of slapped together. There's no connective tissue. Then we get wraparounds where something kind of uh, is a wraparound story, which is a way of introducing all the other sub segments. So we've seen that a lot. Think of something like, or what comes to mind, guys? Um, asylum? How about that? 1972's Asylum. You've got a wraparound story of Robert Powell's trying for a job at an asylum and he has to uh, speak to all the patients and yeah, the patients tell their story. Topic. There we go. Yeah, yeah we love topic. that. Yes, Dead of Night, Dr. Prepper. Well, one of the earliest ones we started with. Excellent stuff. And ahead of its time, as you'll note. Now, what Black Mirror did to innovate <laughs> is as well as having the wraparound which was often kind of the weakest part. It's just a device for getting you the short horror stories. What Black Mirror did with its White Christmas episode was make each of the mini stories contain vital information for understanding a much stronger overall story. Each of those episodes 
built up into one great whole. So even though it can be seen as segments, there is a cohesive overall vision that, that what's the phrase, is greater than the sum of its parts. That is kind of the potential in the horror anthology story that was always waiting to be unleashed. And Black Mirror's White Christmas got there. Unfortunately, as I said, we've already covered it, so we're not going to go over it tonight. You can go back into the archives and look at that. Uh, I believe that's back in the Harrian days. Um, he had the pleasure of that. They followed it up at the end of season four. They tried that method again with a long episode called The Black Museum. Um, I wouldn't say it was as successful but it was the same storytelling method and it is a massive leap on uh, what came. And I'm going to say that we have a film for you that does the same thing. So um, I will spoil it for you. That film is Ghost Story. I won't tell you what the actual detail is because we're going to get to it, but Ghost Story does the same method. So this is sort of the absolute um, latest up-to-date innovations in horror anthologies and Black Mirror got there first. That's why I was so excited to get to it. But um, for the uh, general stuff, it's just also a very good show. Most of these are standard, standalone episodes. Um, there is a nod towards a connective tissue in the Black Mirror universe. Some symbols turn up a lot. You'll often see on the details of these episodes all the little nods that they make to each other. So a classic thing will be if you look in any news story, any Twitter feed that turns up in a Black Mirror episode, you will almost always see a story referenced from another episode. However, I do I don't think we should get too distracted by that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it is effectively a shiny coin. It's an Easter egg. Um, none of these connective tissues so far in Black Mirror have actually really delivered anything. They're more just a bit of an Easter egg for people who are paying attention. Um, and in this, we've we've got a little bit of it. We've um, I'll be able to point you one of these. It's a nice thing. It's a nice thing you can notice but it isn't actually really a wider universe. So I, I hope I've uh, drawn that picture up. Otherwise, these are totally standalone. They can be watched in any order. And uh, so far, there have been no sequels, although people are always talking about them. There was a bit of a... Um, there was a bit of a hint that we there was going to be the first sequel in the Black Mirror universe in the latest season, which I believe was season six, which came out last year. I will show you this now as, as kind of example, this confusion causes. So forgive me for um, the Daily Express here. So Black Mirror dropping a clue that we could be getting our first sequel to an episode we're covering tonight, White Bear. Ooh, what is it? That sounds intriguing. Well, this symbol from White Bear has turned up in the poster. Oh my gosh. It doesn't happen, guys. It's not a sequel. It's a completely unrelated story. Can't confirm. But there is, yeah, there's a little Easter egg. It's just an Easter egg. Um, there is no wider creative uh, connective tissue. So do not be led astray by that. Do not be confused. That's the kind of thing that happens. Um, as for the history of this, I'll be really quick. Uh, this comes from the mind of Charlie Brooker. Very interesting guy. Full name, Charlton Brooker. Um, not the Charles. He's the Charlton. And his background was in sort of satirical film analysis. Um, actually, the first thing he did was as a games journo, and he got fired for being a bit too dark in his humour. Um, back in the day of PC Gamer, if that rings any bells, TCG. Vaguely. Vaguely. Mm. Oh, yeah, I remember it well in the 90s. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's when he was doing it. Um, he moved on to that to um, greater critical acclaim, uh, writing a great series. Well, 
he wrote a site called TV Go Home, which was satirical news listings. That developed into a uh, very ashamedly uh, sort of buried under the carpet, does not like to talk about it, uh, TV sketch show adaptation of TV Go Home. Um, it's quite horrifying. I don't recommend it. Um, but from there, he gets into wider commentary and does really interesting stuff with a series called Screen Wipe. Uh, highly interesting to watch on YouTube. Um, you can find the old episodes. It is great analysis of TV. It's sort of that outsider, slightly cynical perspective, talking about tricks of the tra trade. And that seemed to really build his presence until he sort of transforms again via a sort of comedy route, a strict comedy, uh, presenting on the 10 o'clock show, which I think he was good at, but he appeared to be very uncomfortable with. Um, and I think it's that that moves him into this more, much more background role, where he's a writer, executive producer on this. Um so it's kind of interesting that he did the sort of external critique and then moved into storytelling itself. So no mean feat. And the perspective he brings is a little bit hard to quantify. Uh, this started on Channel 4, doing, because we're British, doing two episodes, uh, sorry, two, three episode seasons. They were smash hits. And then Netflix got in on the game and from season three onwards, you get um, longer episodes and more episodes per season. And really uniquely, basically every season of Black Mirror after that has had a wildly varying format. You know, they haven't stuck to like Supernatural doing uh, 15 seasons of 22 episodes. Um, it's been different every time. And I think that's kind of a quirk of the high quality of this is that they've had the ability to say, we've got five stories this, this season that we can do. And if they've got six stories, they will do six. Um, quite unusual, makes it feel less production line. Anyway, um, I don't think we're going to get much more from that. It's had hiatuses. It's had changes of production company. It's tried the very experimental Choose your own adventure format of Bandersnatch, which is an absolute delight to try. Gosh, Dollface's description of Brooker as Stuart Lee adjacent. It sounds like an insult, but, you know, I think it's kind of fair. Let's, let's maybe discuss that as we go on. But uh, I, won't, I won't ramble much more. I think we should probably just get straight into the episodes because we could go quite deep in. Um, and we're going to kick off with an episode called White Bear. Now, I couldn't get too many screen caps from this because Netflix weirdly did not let me. It let me screen cap the others, but it wouldn't let me do this. So eesh. we'll have to make do with some uh, slightly shoddy screenshots, but we'll do what we can. So um, I believe it was Mergu. You had the pleasure of introducing uh, White Bear. Yeah. Uh, White Bear is the second episode of the second series. It's written by Charlie Brooker, and it's directed by Carl Tibbetts, who did um, Hemlock Grove, uh, kitchen sink, semi-romantic. Uh, it's for Twilight fans. It's <laughs> kitchen sink horror with every movie monster you can think of in basically a teen romance it's watch it if you dare <laughs> i i made it one episode and i realized it was not for me even with eli roth directing yeah i watched it with my wife and my stepdaughter and it, i tried watching it again and did not make it very far <laughs> <laughs> It's, um, okay, White Bear opens with a woman waking up in her house, in her chair, and she has no clue what's going on. She has amnesia. She doesn't remember her name. She's, 
she panics, goes through the house, uh, drinks a glass of water to try and clear her head, notices that people are filming her through her, they all have their uh, phones up and filming her through the windows, including people in the uh, flats next door to hers. And she runs out of the house and everybody gathers around filming her. And she starts being chased by people in masks with a white symbol on them, which he, the upside down Y made of oversized pixels. And she runs down the street. She gets hunted. She runs on to the main street or high street in British terms and um, she gets into a store, and there's a girl in there who introduces herself as Jim, and it's, come on, we've got to get out of here. And they run out of there, and they're being hunted some more, and um, a guy in a van who's seemingly unaffected picks them up, and takes them around. They have discussion about what's going on. And they eventually get to a forest where the guy who drove them there pulls a shotgun and forces them into the woods. And there's people crucified and tied over logs. And they turn the tables on him. And Jim suggests to go find the transceiver that's broadcasting all of this. And they break in there and try and shut it down. And hunters come in and the unnamed lady, our protagonist, grabs the shotgun and fires it and it's confetti. And then she's nabbed and put into a chair and the wall opens up and there's a studio audience clapping and cheering for her being caught. And they play through all the scenes from the perspective of the hunters and the watchers showing what she's de done behind the scenes where they've just been tying the actors up and it's, you know what you've done? No, no. Well, your boyfriend and you did lots of nasty things to a six-year-old girl. And he shows the film, the film clip, which she filmed cheering on her boyfriend doing nasty things. And... Then they show more of the scenes of how it's been caught. And then they knock her out, erase her memory, put her back in the chair in the apartment. And she wakes up again and the next episode starts. How's that for a... Pop? Very swift. Very swift. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, this nightmarish ordeal all featuring all these horror tropes turns out to be uh, literally a theme park. They call it a justice park. And, uh, the White the Bear woman, Justice Park. Yeah, the, the woman that we've been feeling some sympathy for, it turns out, gosh, um, actually not all that sympathetic. Um, but it's kind of it's kind of deeper. It's kind of deeper. Um there are some really interesting touches in this that you might wonder why is that even there? Why did why did that include get included? Um, but uh, Maggie, what's your what's your sort of take on what's going on here? Oh, I figured it out pretty quick. I got Running Man vibes. Um, oh, yeah. was she being falsely prosecuted? Was she? being prosecuted for a crime. I got that vibe, so the ending wasn't that surprising to me that she was guilty. But mm. being chased 
by hunters and um, running around. And then instead of showing the supposed crime at the beginning, they show the crime at the end and then just restart as she was the quote unquote winner of the week. Um, and that's how I saw it. It was very basic to me. It was fairly predictable. Um, I did forget to mention that the little girl, um, who was tortured and killed, had her favorite toy was a white bear. Mm. Um, and that plays into it. And I don't know if that's why they called it the White Bear Justice Center or not. But I imagine it would have been. Mm. Yeah. And the, the symbol is from a tattoo that uh, her boyfriend had on his neck. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting just seeing everybody with their uh, uh, cell phone cameras up and just watching her giving a feeling of anxiety and claustrophobia everywhere she goes she's fenced in by cameras mm. um the hunters were kind of secondary the only real creep out i had was the forest with the crucifixions um, yeah yeah did you um so the guy who does that is michael smiley who is probably a lot better known to brits a bit of a cult figure uh, so had a minor role in Spaced as uh, tires and then cameos in other um, Simon Pegg. Uh, oh, gosh, what's his name? Edgar Wright uh, comedies. Um, he was also absolutely amazing in a horror called Kill List from 2011 by Ben Wheatley. Um, We've covered that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really. So really good charismatic actor who can handle his horror uh he was nifty in that um yeah i want to say tuppence middleton uh was uh have i got a good photo of, i think i have i've got a good photo of her here i want to say she's been in uh, oh good shout dollface utopia as well uh, for mm -hmm. michael smiley um tuppence middleton i want to say was in 28 weeks later I'm not certain. So. Kat, am I wrong? No, TCG's looking that up. It's been, it's been, it's been ages since I last looked. Uh, sorry, what was the name? Uh, Tuppence sorry. Middleton. I want to say she was in that. Let's have a good old butchers. Mm. Give me some cast. Come on, IMDb. Give me some cast. You can do it. You can do it. Um, as for some of the background here, not so um, why does this exist? Why does this episode exist? Um well, the case that it's apparently most inspired by, if you go on the Wikipedia, they talk about, um, oh, this, YouTube's going to love this, uh, the Moores murders, uh, Myra Hindley, Ian Brady. They said there are some sim mm. similarities to that. Um, I've got to say it made me think a lot more of Victoria Columbia. Um and that that might not mean anything to Americans, but uh, basically uh, quite a similar crime, if not the, in the exact details, sort of uh, the nature of the victim, um, like young black girl uh, in an urban environment was a victim. Like, not a case to really look up, I'm going to be honest, um, but it, it's kind of a blend of those cases. And sadly, uh, when they come around, they get a lot of attention. Um, and I think what Brooker was... <sighs> Brooker, when you've watched his wider coverage, it might not have seemed relevant when I went into it. Um, why are you yammering on about him doing film criticism, sorry, media criticism and TV reviews? Well, something that comes up a lot in his screen wipe days is he gets to talk about what whatever's the sort of hot news of the week. Um, and he tended to then cover quite a few media feeding frenzies. One that really comes to mind, and this is pure Brit nostalgia here, was uh, Kerry Katona having a bit of a meltdown, or uh, when Jade Goodall was on 
celebrity big brother during the racism scandal and there was a big media circus and uh, they were picked out as kind of the figures of hate and brooker went a little bit out of his way to analyze what had actually gone on look at the facts uh, go a bit actual justice warrior and see what happened in actuality in reality and kind of undo the narrative that was being told what I'm trying to say is he's a guy who I think tends not to be drawn into a frenzy. He tries to uh, stay outside of a narrative. And so he, he will usually have quite an interesting take. Um, and I think that is the perspective that he's brought to White Bear. And it might seem very controversial that you might see this and say, okay, but she she let a kid be murdered. She filmed a kid being um, uh, given a no good, bad time and then murdered. I hate that we have to use this uh, sort of workaround on YouTube because it makes it sound like we're trivializing it. Gosh. Um, and what am I trying to say here? Sorry, I got distracted by the YouTube code. Um, Gosh, no, I've absolutely lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I was going for is he's looking at this feeding frenzy on someone who absolutely has done something utterly evil, but he's trying to complicate that. He's trying to ask a bit more, is this genuine? Um, is this natural? What what are the dynamics happening here when there is this absolute frenzy of hate on someone who absolutely is evil? But is there something more going on? I have absolutely rattled on, guys. Step in. I'm making no sense. It makes perfect <laughs> sense, but... At first, she's sympathetic because she has no memory of what she's done, why mm. she's there. And then you find out that even when her memories are coming back, she's like, but I don't, I didn't really do anything. I, and then the little bit of shots that they gave, it's, yeah, you did. You helped out. You egged mm. it on. But when they state that, didn't they state that her boyfriend was found dead? Yeah, yeah. boyfriend boyfriend did a uh, uh, did a Fred West. Aha. Uh -huh. Basically, um, yeah, he, he did his Ty Epstein out. style. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're taking it out on her. Mm, yeah, I mean, Doctor Prepper sort of mentions about the. the, the punishment when i was when i was watching this um i i didn't have it like the the, the, the twist got uh, the twist did did get me i i i thought it was going to be something completely different I, I can't even remember what it was i just i wasn't expecting it to be um quite so dark mm. uh in its in its uh reveal mm. and i did i did get a general sense of unease uh throughout the uh, th throughout the episode i I almost felt like it was kind of a commentary on like a modern, like, like, like a modern day bystander effect because mm. I, anyone with a Twitter account will know that the amount of clips that, that, that are floating around on that platform of people being attacked, you know, you know, in, in all sorts of different ways, you know, there's always someone with a camera uh, watching it and quite often taking glee from 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 what they're seeing um and and oh, these this, guys well like these yeah exactly and and this is and this is an exact situation yeah and, and it's it, it, it from an artistic perspective this this kind of like demonstrates that or exemplifies that quite quite well i think i mean the reality is they're standing there and they're essentially almost like starstruck and and excited to be around someone who's done something which is just unspeakable mm. and, and and yet th th this is this is 
this is just a jolly day out for these people. They've paid for it. They've presumably they've paid for it at least. Um, and you know, the, the, the emotional reaction to being in front of somebody like that is completely, it's just completely the opposite of what, what you, what you would expect. Um, in terms of the actual punishment itself, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with essentially torturing this person mentally and, you know, almost, uh, you know, revealing sort of at the end of the day, oh, you know, you're, you're stuck here. You're going to be reliving this like a sort of like evil groundhog's day. But as a parent myself, I mean, what I kind of I kind of thought myself like, what would be the input from the parents in in, in this regard? Like, mm. like surely they'd be aware of it, and there 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 is a level of exploitation. I don't want to say you know not more capitalism, but there, this is being capitalized on. Well, I, I you think know, they they they've they taken this punishment, and they and they've taken yeah they they they've taken someone. I think running um I think Running Man's a great uh, by the way a great sort of um comparison i didn't think about until you until you said it but it does sort of have that element of these are criminals who have done heinous terrible things obviously in running man it's slightly different because you know it's propagandized um, but in in this it's very literal and they're going right how can we make money from it and it's just yeah i think it, it, it if anything as a parent looking at it if, if somebody you know obviously heaven forbid touch would never have to ever experience something like this but mm. i'd be fuming i'd be livid if this was how this this is how someone was being punished for something they'd done to my child i mean i sure it's it's obviously going to have an effect on that criminal and rightly so but it, it is just it's demented in ways that i can't articulate i don't know if it's the right and what i'm, what I'm trying to say is i don't know if it's the right punishment yeah, I'd like is... to. Go, I'd like. I'd like it to be far more harsh and far more personal. Put it that way. Yeah, if I may. So Adam loves horror has come in with a really relevant uh, comment here. So thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, uh, Four dollars ninety nine. Thank you very much. Uh, and he says similar to the disappearance of Willie Bingham that we watched a few months ago. So that was in our first horror shorts ranking stream. How can justice and empathy coexist? And Oh, yeah. Missed you guys. Happy to be here today. Very happy you could make it, Adam. Really, always chuffed. Um, there's a really good contrast here because in Willie Bingham, um, the parents were there. So the parents of the victim were deciding what punishment was done and they were very, very direct about it. And I thought that was a much better justice. Hmm. So in massive contrast to Willie Bingham, in this one, the parents of the girl, I think her name is Jemima, are out of the picture. And uh, TCG was not wrong. It's been commercialised. The justice has been commercialised. It's been turned into a product. Um, and like literally capitalised. One of the things that strikes me as so interesting is they they whip up this absolute storm about, um, oh gosh, Victoria and mm -hmm. parade her. And it's... This car design, I think, is deliberately oh, meant to look a bit like the Pope Mobile. Oh my God, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's deliberate. Like, we're, we are reifying this awful person. Um, but it, it's it's just a product. Like, you see, when the actors get her back in, like, Michael Smiley's character is whipping up this frenzy. Like, guys, you've got to shout at her. You've got to let that bitch have it. But the second the they're in the house. He's just sort of, it's just a job for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This isn't justice. This is entertainment. Um, well, and in fact, the actual well, justice that... could be done any second. Um, you know, she could have been dispatched, but what's happening is, uh, yes, Adam loves horror. Exactly. It's all a show. It's all a product. And I think Brooker is asking us to look at what, how how that's happening to us today are we being served that kind of entertainment it's the short scene of them 
the crowd jumping around and clapping mm. when the doors open to the stage. And it's like you're watching Criminal Justice via Jerry Springer show, and that just creeped me out. Oh, did you see the uh, uh, the bloody sponges being sold for two pounds? No, I missed that one. It, <laughs> it's it's a small detail, but someone is selling sponges that people can then chuck at the car. Someone's right. making a, a little bit of cash on it. That makes yeah. it even creepier. <laughs> it's um, just weird. It is just weird. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I get Dr. Prepper thinking that uh, this is kind of like a... Uh, uh, that it, it might be that the punishment might be going too far. I, I my my concern, well, not my concern, but my my uh, unease about it was from how how it has just been completely capitalised and how the severity mm -hmm. of the crime that was carried out has just been completely overshadowed by this just by this just opportunity that is business opportunity, and there's mm -hmm. nothing there's nothing from it that that feels sincere or genuine. Uh, in in result of that, it is. I think someone said, "Yeah, Adam Loves Horror says, you know, it's, it's such a simple oh. statement, but yeah, it's so true. It is all a show. You know, you could be like a customer service advisor at the front of the you know front of the desk. You hate your job. You absolutely loathe your job. But for that eight hours, you'll sit there with a smile and you'll serve your customers, and you'll you'll be the happiest person. But then as soon as as soon as you as soon as you know the the, the door shut and the shutters come down, that you know that." that that image that that act just dropped and you know mm. the real thing and, and that's what you see in this you know it's like oh it's absolutely disgusting what this person did you're a monster okay guys make sure and then you know behind the scenes like make sure this will make sure this is all okay all right let's just get this bit mm. here and you know oh yeah no, we'll worry about that later and it's just yeah it didn't sit easy it didn't sit well with me yeah totally i mean let's say th uh, this is challenging this is something that brooker mm. might be critiqued for like Frankly, you might say it's really bad taste to try and make us feel sympathetic to someone who's done the awful things at Victoria Bum, what's her name? Gosh darn it, what's her name? Why do we never remember any character name? <laughs> I mean, uh, I know. Uh, I just uh, want to sort of, uh, no, this is Victoria uh, Skillane. I mean, if you if you compare this to sort of like the public, you know, the, the public executions back in the day, mm. like okay yeah there was an element of a show about that but that that at least was genuine like genuine justice you know for the standards whatever you whatever your views on capital punishment are you know what was being served you know there was no sort of show there was no pretense there was no you know, opp you know opportunistic uh element to that it was this person did something wrong we are punishing them and we are using their punishment as a deterrent to potential criminals that want to do something like this in the future mm -hmm. this this doesn't feel like that at all and i say because of that oh hello what's he saying oh, okay oh interesting beautiful hey oh, we got a little lotus eaters in i was gonna say what are you guys in. doing in here <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. You, you guys get it. You see it where you get the witch hunts, um, and it it's uh, it's moved away from the uh, project. But this, I'm sympathetic to this. Yeah, the justice is being miscarried, and you want that catharsis. Yeah, um, I think that's realistic. Like we want when there's uh, some sort of outrageous crime, of course we want justice. Although you might say that to an extent. We want the justice because the crime has been made personal to us, whereas really it belongs to a much smaller. You could make the argument the crime, the victimhood, the need for justice belongs to a smaller circle, but we've had our attention uh, brought to it by the same media that w want to then sell us the uh, sort of uh, the bloodlust. So, but I guess yeah, the appetite for retribution is. I should just read your whole comment. Uh, Connor, when justice has been miscarried for so long, then catharsis becomes a public spectacle because the appetite for retribution is so great. Scapegoating eclipses any possibility of forgiveness. 
Interesting. I think there's a lot in that. Maybe you guys want to uh, address it too. I think the point that sticks out to me is there is no, this is still a miscarriage of justice. Justice, I think, should be done quickly. These guys aren't doing justice. They are making a product. Um, actual justice could have been done very swiftly and dispassionately. And there's a real question about what this appetite for retribution does to us. Yeah. Um, do you guys want to uh, hop on that one? I think it's a good comment. Yeah, I think, I th see, for me, the sympathy for me doesn't lie with the... Doesn't doesn't lie with this person. I mean, for, for, you know, do do what you want to. For all I care, for what you know, for what she and her boyfriend did to a, you know, poor little defenseless child. You know, you know, do whatever. I I don't care. Those people don't deserve human rights. Don't care. Don't care. Based. Right. However, my it's not however, but where um, but where my, um, my where my sympathies lie is with the is with the parents is with the family because again th this is something that's a constant reminder and as i say it do it, it just doesn't feel it, it doesn't feel respectful it doesn't feel compassionate you know and i think for mm. them it would be and I, as i say you know I, I i come at this from a from from the perspective of someone who has children and i just mm. think if, if something like that was to be exploited that i'm personally connected to in that regard i just i would not sit comfortable with it at all because then it just feels like it almost feels like a mockery you know mm. can i throw something in here that charlie brooker has maybe done a bit of a sneaky he's kind of given us a, a bit of a cheat a, a needless complication with the whole memory erasure thing mm. i would say that possibly adds a needless moral complexity to the situation it's. I was reading the notes on things, and he rewrote this a couple times. And the final edit to get it where it needed to be, he quote unquote wrote it in a fever dream, <laughs> and it shows to a point. But it's. I'm losing my train of thought. Basically, it involves everybody in the justice system, and it leaves out the justice. Mm, yeah. I, as a parent myself, I would rather see Walker in isolation and let her rot, and don't let, let me move on, knowing that she's been caught and she gets to serve out her sentence alone. Oh, no, I would end it. End it. Oh, if I had the opportunity, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't uh, go vigilante, but... Oh, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, you know, the thing that we don't do anymore, I would say, mm. do it. Do it. Mm. Well, that's the thing. We haven't done that in my state for quite a while either. And it's between this and letting her rot, I'd prefer to let her rot and think about what she's done rather than wiping her memory and then surprising her with it day after day after day. It's... Oh. Uh, just looking at these two... Can anyone quickly whip me up a meme of the two soy jacks pointing, but also with their smartphones and have them point at, at Victoria's the way. lane? Yeah, the other way. Could someone do that? Could someone like quickly get me the smartphone version of this of the two soy jacks pointing meme? I will love you forever <laughs> if you can do that for me. Um, I wanted to bring it back to. I, I'm so tempted to go into the. Uh, vigilante justice conversation <laughs> but I thought um I want to drag it back to this because Harry's comment was instructive and it was something I wanted to touch on because it I think the smartphone angle is really interesting um and you talked about it a bit TCG about how it's sort of we end up getting sucked in involved in it we end up watching it as entertainment um and but you also hit up on the other angle that I thought of the smartphone. It's um, this response we have 
that we all just get in and film it. Mm. Like we all tend mm -hmm. to get reduced to these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody steps in these days or nobody does anything nowadays. I mean, obviously Daniel ball, Penny like... is, is a kind of good, good reason why you might not want to step in, but I mm. think there is something very, I love well, I don't think you... comparison, by the way. Oh yeah. You can't like say this justice. is, um, sorry. You, you can't say this is left or right. This is no. quite, I think a unique Brooker point that we, we, have found ourselves abstracted into uh, people who just record this thing. We hop out on our phones, we depersonalize, we take ourselves out from being actors to simply being um, kind of media voyeurs. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. And it's it's interesting. Like this instinctive response to is to get involved. Uh, Connor's Connor, got yeah, in with yeah, yeah, David yeah, Dawn. Absolutely. Yeah. David absolutely. Dawn, Daniel Penny, Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. Don't get involved, bro. Just just film the store burning down so the uh insurance companies can I probably shouldn't take the convo in that direction. But... Mm, no. Sounds like sounds like advice. <laughs> yeah. It's just as I say, it's interesting that we've kind of become conditioned into being simply voyeurs. But there is the other side of this is if you get involved, oof, that probably will not work out well for you. Yeah, especially the way I'd be tempted to get involved. But <laughs> then again, it might be worth it in the end. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um, someone made a really clever comment. I was going to try and hop on. There was discuss, uh, discussion of Dante and Justice. Theremin trees got it. So I, I was going to raise a possibility for you folks. Um, Murgy, you're absolutely right. This got rewritten a whole bunch, as best I can tell. I've ordered the uh, Inside Black Mirror book. So if we ever go back to this, I'll have a lot more information. But I know a fair few of them struggle with the ending, and they'll be rewritten a few times. I was almost wondering, um, because uh, sorry, let let's restart this. There were elements in this that did not make sense to me, like the aspect of why the heck it is a theme park. Uh, filled with symbols that are meant to jog Victoria Scalene's memory, in an un but are kind of unrelated. So the photo of the victim, the presence of the white bear symbol, which we know is a tattoo on her boyfriend's neck, the use of the phrase white bear. Like, it's it up the anxiety and the paranoia. That one's pretty evident. She, can, she can't remember it. Hmm. But the symbolism will stick in her subconscious, and the more she sees the symbols, mm. it ups the anxiety and the paranoia. Yes. And what I that. wanted to raise was it's quite far-fetched, it's quite out there to build a theme park doing this. So I almost wondered if there was a bit of a classic Twilight Zone trope where this was originally written as literally a dying nightmare like she's being executed and this is flashing in front of her eyes, like she's having a nightmare where those symbols are sort of um, breaking into her consciousness. She's tried to forget it all. She's tried to pass it off, but the reminders of what she did are sort of coming back to her in nightmarish, twisted ways. I kind of wondered if that was the original idea. I don't know. I really don't. I know just by the notes that I read, it was originally a very different way of looking at it, but paranoia and anxiety were a big part of it. Mm. But other than that, I don't know. Just struck me that they might have been thinking about it. Uh, since we're mentioning the Twilight Zone, a fair few people have pointed out that this greatly resembles an episode from season one um, called Judgment Night. A uh, very good episode, I've got to say. Um, similar case, someone is stuck in a 
excuse me, never ending loop of personal hell. Although that is um, where the sort of same night replays over and over. Although in that case, uh, it, it's much more supernatural than this. Um, Black Mirror always tries to be sci-fi, but only, only slightly sci-fi. In fact, we're going to see there's a story in t that we're covering tonight that is completely um, possible with today's technology. Uh, Dr. Prepper knows the Twilight Zone episode I'm talking about saying, yes, it's about a mid-century German uh, captain of a U-boat, I believe, um, finding himself on the ship that he orders to be sunk. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Fellow Twilight Zone appreciator in here. <laughs> good times, good times. Um, did did you guys have anything more on uh, White Bear? Not myself. No, I think I think you guys have covered pretty much everything there. I feel about the same. There's just the creep out of the voyeurism. Cheerful almost greedy voyeurism just that's the part that really got to me that and the crucifixion yeah, but, mm. although I, I would i would sort of touch upon the point you made about the little sort of like easter eggs i suppose for the uh uh f for the woman throughout the park i'm just wondering whether those were intentional to sort of jog certain parts not uh, yeah sort of jog jog certain parts because obviously because obviously she had no idea as to as to who she was, and obviously you kind of, if you're in that sort of situation, you kind of want to try and picture yourself as almost like an a, a, an ideal being. And so when she's seeing the pictures of the little girl, you know, her immediate assumption is that's my daughter, and she's trying to tie you know other sort of flashbacks to to justify that. Uh, and then you know it just sort of adds to the to the shock of the reveal at the end. Mm. If that makes sense, as opposed to just mm. you know putting it out there and yeah, I I I I I felt like it was more of a sort of a build build up an expectation of oh I've got a I've got a husband and a and a and a, and a daughter and this is you know they're they're somewhere out there and it's like, I actually no your boyfriend. Uh, yeeted himself and and the, the, the girl isn't your daughter in fact that's your victim you, you're a sick person you mm. it's a i know it's, it's a powerful storytelling device that they use like over and over again we just usually expect it to be mm. maybe a bit a bit kinder really um versus i don't know if there's a satisfying answer to this because the answer is probably to make her suffer yeah Oh, I, simply, I yeah. do feel this thing of taking away her memory is just so counterproductive. Like if you take I... away the memory of what she did, how can I say, like this would still work if she knew who she was and what she'd done and, I... and was keeping it quiet, but they take away everything. And possibly the answer is, yeah, they're, they're dicks. They're, they're too focused on um, their product, making... Um, uh, I, I, I don't know if I don't, the product and not on justice itself. I, I don't know if it would work though if she if she remembered. I mean, for a start, the organization would be a hell of a lot different mm -hmm. in terms of making mm -hmm. this pattern, in terms of repeating this every single day. Um, but as I say, it's like taking away that 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 knowledge of of what she did, and then sort of you know hitting up hitting it on her right at the very end every single day and seeing her, mm -hmm. her 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 genuine reaction to you are actually a terrible terrible monster you know spending the whole day trying to survive and thinking you know the, 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 what have you, i done what have you, i done you know who am you know the, the question is who am i and you don't think that you're that person Mm. That 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 thought doesn't come into your mind. You you know you you think you're a good person. You see it loads of times in TV shows, like where you know that the bad guy gets amnesia and they think they're good, and then as as it goes along, it <laughs> as it goes mm. along, they remember more. Oh my god, yeah. I'm a terrible person. And, and then they decide to go one of two ways. They can either change or um, they can revert to uh, revert to character. With this person, yeah, by removing that b b removing that sense of who she is. It allows her to to build up this 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 picture of her 
as a as a good person and then yeah you just smack smack her in the face with this actually you're not mm. this is who you, you are you rip away you take her memories out she reverts to the ignorant to the dang it i just had the word she reverts to the innocence of a child and then has yeah. it ripped away in the end it's just like she did with a little girl, rip away her innocence. Exactly. And mm. Remove remove her from the equation. As there is, a, as part of that, I suppose you could say there is a consistent make the punishment fit the crime aspect. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the rewatch, I mean, I've rewatched this many times, but I only thought about it today. The fact that she's rescued by a, a chap in a van. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like. Oh, yeah. that just got dark. That yeah, got dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I mean, he didn't have free candy painted on it, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, Connor's had an interesting point. So, set writes, I doubt Charlie Booker, uh, I think it'll be Brooker, has uh, read Camus, but he writes about the theme parkification of everything as an optional high dopamine experience by the anarcho tyrannical state in the great deculturation. Mm -hmm. um, dare I ask which Camus? Um, wrote that. Um, was it Albert or the other one? You you can tell me. Maybe I'll look it up myself. I haven't heard about that, but yeah, that's interesting. Theme parkification would well it fits as being made a product, being something heightened, being something oversaturated for you as an experience. Yeah, how that how the anarcho tyrannical state gets in that. I'm interested in that. I I think I would have to read that, but I'm intrigued. Thank you. That's that's a great reference. Great comment. Um, right. Dr. Brepper has added here that there's no mens rea for Victoria. Uh, for anyone who, uh, so for non-lawyers, mens rea is the mental component of the crime. You've got the actual physical act, the deed, that is the actus reus. And mens rea is the the mental component, the intention. So what he's saying there is because she has no mens rea, uh, because her brain is getting wiped, um, effectively she's not guilty. I assume that's what he meant. And I think that that's why I say it's a bit of a, a needless complication that Brooker has thrown in that I think almost <laughs> allows him to sort of, uh, yeah, I'll just say add needless complexity there. Um Ah, Harry is saying it is the other Camus, using the phrasing that I used in the uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers review. Anyway, um, right. I, I think I, I I could just talk about this all day. I, I will just, as a final note on this, say that the white bear symbol is one of the most prominent long-running Easter eggs that they do. Uh, in Black Mirror, if they're going to slide a sneaky in-joke reference to another episode, it will almost certainly be the the white bear symbol. So watch out for it, and you probably see it in a few episodes. Um, Adam Los has just added another super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, similar to Hostel, how many would pay to attend? Well, I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> who who would watch climbing for dollars? Hell yes. Oh, sorry, that was a Robocop one, but yeah. <laughs> you got the voice and everything. Ah, oh, brilliant. Um well I think the interesting thing is hostile, it was active. You know, there's a great line in White Bear where they talk about the hunters, and Tuppence Middleton's character says, um, they were always like that, but they hid it. But when uh, in the storyline that this signal has gone out and turned everyone into these roles, i.e. turns most people into obsessive um, recorders and observers and voyeurs, others into victims and others into hunters. Do you see the metaphor, guys? Do you see it? Do you see the metaphor? <laughs> um, yeah, um that that was much more passive uh, but she says that basically the hunters were always there but they kind of got permission i think those those might be the kind of people who would go to hostel who would pay 
Um, I think it's uh, Beat Takeshi's character drops in the. Uh, you can pay all your. You could spend all your money in there. It gets addictive, and I think yeah. what Brooker is saying is when we join in these frenzies and we get turned into a uh, sort of hate junkies. It ain't good for us. Um, season three finale, Hated in the Nation, all about that same idea, which is told, I think, a lot more succinctly here. Thank you very much for the uh, Super Chat, Adam Lewis Horror. And uh, yes, Connor has got in absolutely climbing for dollars was running, man. But mm -hmm. but I'd buy that for a dollar. Wait, is that? Darn that it. That's Robocop. Yeah, that's I'd Robocop. buy that for dollars right. Robocop. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is absolutely a great film. It yeah, we uh, we reviewed that, didn't we? Yeah, we did a rogue stream on it. We couldn't justify it, so we we just did it as a rogue stream. Great times. Um, wow, well, we should move on. We should move on. We'll be in big trouble with Super Nanny tonight. Um, oh, we've got another two of these to go yet. <laughs> I know. I, I couldn't. I couldn't say no. I was hooked. I was totally hooked. All right, let's move on. And I mean, you can sense a bit of a running theme in this one. I'll move us on to season three, which is the first one on Netflix. And we've got an episode called Shut Up and Dance, uh, directed by James Watkins, who uh, you will know from Eden Lake, which we've covered on this channel. Uh, great times. I Connor, were you on for that? I think I, I think you did Eden Lake. Uh, I, I was here for Eden Lake. Yeah, you were. Was, was it Connor? I forget. Uh... Um Apologies, my memory is terrible. Uh, he also did the really good My Little Eye, uh, which is kind of a Big Brother-inspired horror. Very creepy, very underrated, very forgotten. So James Watkins, My Little Eye, give it a watch. Great little film. He has ended up... That's the one, got on. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's ended up writing this, one of the beauties, standard thing in all the horror anthologies... Loads of guest directors. Right. Oh, yeah. Harry was Con on for Eden Lake as well. Yeah. Nifty. Yeah, yeah, both were. They both were. That's why I was getting confused. I just, I just remembered Owen Jones is on the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crying. Of course, he, of course he would be. Mm. All right. Um, TCG, would you like to give us the, uh, the Guinness summary for... Uh, Shut up and drive. Yeah, sure. So, uh, shut up and drive. Uh, full disclaimer shut up was my favorite. Uh, dance, sorry. Shut up and dance. Uh, full disclaimer was my favorite of the three. I'm just going to put that out there right now. Uh, so this this story follows a young lad named Kenny who works at a um, who works at like a, a restaurant, sort of like a Pizza Hut esque sort of restaurant, and he seems a bit of a loner. Seems a bit of a no, I wouldn't say a loser, but he he, he seems I, I felt very almost almost on the spectrum. This lad um, seems sweet enough uh, and innocent enough. Um, and then one day well, he goes home and his sister's on the laptop and he's like, what you doing? And she tried to download a film illegally, which we do not endorse. You should always, always purchase your films and support the small businesses that are the multi-billion dollar Hollywood film industries. Um, and lo and behold, because she didn't do it properly, he got a bunch of malware on his computer. So cleans it off. And then uh, later on that evening, his mum goes out, presumably on a date. He has to look after his sister. He's watching some uh, music video with some scantily clad dressed women on there. And he's, being a teenage lad, he thinks, hmm, okay. Well, I've just cleaned my laptop. I might as well make it dirty again. So he goes upstairs and uh, he, uh, he, he jerks the gherkin. Anyway, so cleans up afterwards, smells his fingers, which is absolutely grotesque, goes back and he gets, a, he gets an email. And, uh, oh, oh, he didn't cover up his, he didn't cover up his, uh, his camera. Mark Zuckerberg does that, but he didn't. And this is why, because they, they they saw what he did and they recorded it. And this guy now has to do whatever the, uh, the people on the other end are, are telling him. And he goes on this little adventure where he initially goes to a car park, gets a cake off of a guy who is also under the instruction of these anonymous people. He then takes the cake to a man who is actually bloody Jerome Flynn from Robson and Jerome. I couldn't believe it. Loved it. 
and then they oh, go hang off. On, I've got the I've got the photo. Yes, um, yes. <clears throat> I've got him in. It's it. Oh no! Oh no! No! It's haunted, guys. It's haunted. Quick, you know what to do. Ghost Rishi Sunak is in here. You know what to type. You can clear Quick. him out. Zero seats. Zero seats in the chat. He will flee. He can't stand it. <laughs> I need zero seats filling up that chat now quick, to quick, clear quick. Rishi go, go, out. Go, 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 go. Oh, no. Not during the summary. Oh, Come disgusting. On, man. Disgusting. I need those flooding in. That's it, Dr. Prepper. Get him out, get him out, get him out. I'm telling the, the, the Guinness is going to overflow. I think it already has overflown, to be honest with you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, he's still sticking around. Oh, here we go. Right, another one. They're coming in. They're coming in thick and fast. Zero seats. Zero seats. How long can zero he stick seats. around for? Zero seats. Zero seats. Zero seats. <laughs> zero <laughs> seats. Yes, zero seats. Come on. It's coming in. It's coming in. Oh, he's gone. He's oh, gone. Thank God. Right, get him out. Get him out. Him. Get him out. Get oh, out. That was, that was too much. That was too much. And take your cronies with you too, you scumbag. Um, yeah, so he... Um, thank you, chat. <laughs> Jerome uh, signs up with... Uh, now I'm going to call him Young Robson. And they go uh, to a car. And they take this car to a bank. And... <laughs> Young Robson here now, a.k.a. Kenny, needs to go and rob the bank. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the finer details later. Then they take the car off. To... <laughs> I love it. Love it. Um, and then, you, yeah, they take the uh, car. I, I want to do I want to do the reveal later because I know there's some people who haven't watched this. Uh, right. OK. Watch this. But yeah, anyway, he goes back. He, they, they go off. They, they take the money off to a field. And then um, he has to then take it up to this like, secluded area. And then he has to fight somebody to the death. Um, the, the whole reason why they're following... Uh, the instructions is because if they don't, then they, he obviously is going to leak the video uh, to all of the guys' contacts. Um, but yeah, I loved this episode. It was mm. brilliant. I thought the guy who played Kenny, the the, the guy holding the, uh, the the water pistol, was brilliant. Absolute top tier. <laughs> yeah, Alex Lawther, amazing. And and the the twist completely got me. This was the only one of the three episodes that I actually went back and watched again to 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 try and catch the early like to catch the signs of of that twist, and I can't believe I let him slip past me. It was oh man, yeah. so good. I I think I mean it slipped past me as well the first time. And and to, are, are we are we going to try and guard that twist a little bit longer? Um, yeah, I think yeah, I th I think we, so. We can hold on. We can hold yeah. on. All right, we'll we'll keep the twist. Uh, close. I I want I want to put you, put you put the chat in the mind in the mindset that I was in. Right, if you haven't seen this one, okay, and you're watching it for the first time, you need to understand that this guy genuinely comes across as defenseless, and like he is, he is defenseless. He's got mm -hmm. no, there's like he's completely under the whim of these people, and he's so meek and timid and just so socially awkward. Yeah, like when he goes to rob the bank, he literally he, he pisses himself mm -hmm. <laughs> in the bank, and he's. He, you can tell his mind's racing like he doesn't he's like he's just like give me money give me money lots of it like he, he like and the woman's like do you want to take the bag do you want to put it in a bag and he, like, he doesn't give him the bag he's just frozen like he's he's just all over the place throughout the entire episode and it's wonderful to watch until you get to the ending mm. yeah i love and then the all aspect. of that yeah all of that sympathy all of that oh my god i'm i'm completely on board with this guy it changes, it changes. <laughs> mm. yeah, it, oh, it's brilliant. Just the feeling of the crime caper. Uh, <laughs> you never see the hacker. You never see the hacker, never. but he's running mm. a crime caper uh, using people who've made minor transgressions. And it gave me the feeling of one of the setups of, the saint mm. or a little bit darker um ghost in the shell standalone complex the laughing man story where the people get blackmailed into doing bad things uh to show that to punish them for their minor crimes and then the twist comes and you're like good for the hacker 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wait, he's the good guy. <laughs> well, he's the good I, guy. Wait, I don't know if I'd, I don't know if I'd go with that, but um, no, I would. So Doctor Prepper's got there. Absolutely. This is um, another episode where we are with a protagonist that we're very sympathetic to, until we aren't. Um, but it's also this idea about how much punishment can be meted out to people um and how good that is like all these people were sort of doing transgressions that then led them into just being further vulnerable at, um i mean I, I don't know where you want to take the analysis i i took for far too long on white bear so i'll probably pipe down a little bit on this one I think I think most of the chat have already got it because mm -hmm. they've already seen it. So yeah, I think yeah we can we can I, th I think. All right, we we can do full details, full spoilers. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Let's let's go. So uh, yeah, it turns out that so at the very end, so as as he's going along, and he meets because first of all he meets a, a like a, like a gentleman on a bike. Um, this is at the very end. This is the last one. So the first guy he he ends up meeting is is at the top of a car park, and he gives him a cake. And he's you, you don't get any indication as to what the other guy has done. Mm. Um, it's it, it, if anything, you get just like a little bit of exposition. He's like, uh, you know, you, you find out that you just have to follow their instructions, do everything as they say, and then they'll let you go. They'll, they'll they they won't they won't do anything. So everybody who's working in on this has 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 some dirt that they want to try and keep mm -hmm. you know swept under the rug so when he goes and meets uh jerome flynn uh mm. he finds out that actually the hackers have been pretending uh to be a um an, an escort named mindy and now jerome has a family at home he's got a wife and kids and you know he he just basically wants a bit of a thrill with a younger woman again there's another hint mm. which you get um and when they have their you know, interaction the woman the business executive woman who drops the keys yes that's right at the very beginning fire, yeah. you find yeah. out that she's committed a major racism oh she did yeah she did some well, she did some major racismus on the i, uh, I did i did make use of the pause function uh, to get the expose on her up. Oh yeah, it was um, jokes. Yeah, there was um, my brain is blanking here. There is a psychological um technique, which is like um, you you give a figure that sets an assumption or a standard as a middle ground, and I can't remember the name for it because we're doing this live. If anyone knows the name I'm talk the thing I'm talking about, let me know. But it's like um if we're bidding for something and I say I start at hundred pounds, everyone else might start bidding from like 110, 120. But if I were to start at 50, they might say, Oh yeah, the thing's probably only worth about 60. Um, does anyone know the one I, I mean? If not, do you get the concept? Um I get the concept. Hmm. Yeah. So one of the things this is doing is with Jerome Flynn, uh, his character, it kind of sets that starting point at infidelity. Yeah. And we think that, oh, crikey, what's his name? Not Alex. Alex is the actor. Kenny? Kenny. God, they say it about 100 times in the episode. Oh, dear. Um, you assume that Kenny... His thing is just he's he's been making the bold man cry, <laughs> and he's been caught on camera. Yeah. Um, but you you kind of had the norm set. The other guy you and the woman you don't know, but you assume the infraction is kind of at that level because of what we know from um, um, from Jerome Flynn's character. Yeah. I, I should probably you know get what? his I'm name, gonna, actually. Do you know what? I, I, can see, I can see what you're saying. I can see what you're saying. Um, Hector. But I, I don't... I, I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think for... I think for this, because, I mean, you don't find out about this one until the very end. It's interesting, because she only appears at the very beginning, slipping the keys, on, like, driving into the car park, mm. which, by the way, um, Kenny and, and Hector 
is the guy's act is just uh character's name um i think you just said yeah yeah yeah, yeah. cool uh yeah they, they end up taking that car later to then go to then drive mm-hmm. to the um to the bank to do yeah, it to, to, do the to set up caper uh where nobody yeah. knows each other and that's what it felt like that's why i said it felt like the saints the saint or standalone complex where everything leads to something that leads to a big thing only the big thing mm. is the reveal to the world what each one of these people did yeah one thing i didn't catch is what the bicyclists did you never know even at um, the end well i, I, I don't had think a find theory that. on that. Shows him confronting his family and that's yeah because yeah. they're just because yeah you see him confronting but I, I try to listen out and you don't really hear anything presumably it's something degenerate like i don't know he might have like had a bit on the side I, I, who knows who knows um, i thought it was a gay thing it might have been um just because uh, I, I in that community that would be mm. enough to get you in trouble Maybe. presumably making Could a be. judgment um yeah. and because there seemed to be a, a, a one of the guys in there appeared to be a priest trying to do a sort of pray over gesture yeah and mm. i was a sh- so that's the only thing i got from that because we interestingly for him we don't get any detail there's yeah. um by the way before we move on i'll just point out in this um i i, I just want to say sorry i, oh, I just go ahead, I, go I ahead. just want to say that i know i think if if we're we're looking at this screen now and obviously, you know, we as outsiders can look mm. at this and look at the actions of Kenny and, and Hector, and we can place sort of judgments in terms of like, we can stack how serious they are. I, mm. you know, you know, while obviously we, we don't endorse the racismus, we can, we can all agree that, you know, saying some naughty words by a text message or, or whatever is, mm. is, is severely less more impactful than, you know, cheating on your wife or you know looking at pictures of cheese pizza cheese pizza yep yeah. mm. you know however the impact that it would have on the individual like so for her she's not going to care about that from, from their side obviously she could be morally outraged and whatnot but as a woman in that as a doesn't even have to be a woman but as a person in that position that ceo's position having something like this come out could be absolutely damaging and so mm-hmm. it makes sense that she would try and, and and essentially take the same steps as these other individuals to to to, to protect their um, to protect their reputation, their you know their their, their credibility. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously there are there there are weights and sort of like levels to to, to this. Um, but yeah, I I, I didn't see. I, I did find it interesting they sort of slipped this in. But again, like I think if we would sort of look at it from her mm. perspective there you know there's a massive impact in you, you mm-hmm. see it don't you i mean it, it, it doesn't take i mean just to sort of put in like there was a there was a clip going around early this week of a chelsea footballer um i think it was Con, yeah conor gallagher and he was in the tunnel and he was with two of the mascots one one little boy was white one little boy was black and he he sort of looks at he looks at the young black uh, young black boy, right? You see him. You do see him pat him on the shoulder, but the, but the kid then holds up to to do like a high five, and Connor just sort of turns uh, turns away. Now, he obviously didn't see. He obviously didn't really notice what the kid was doing, um, and the kid sort of just left there hanging. Oh my god, man! They the, the internet just dragged him through the mud, you know, with ra- yeah, racist would. accusations, and you know, just he was getting dragged for days about him being called racist. And in the end, Chelsea had to come out and basically defend the defend the guy because there was a picture of him afterwards, like with both of the boys, like yay. But you don't see that, mm. you don't see that. But yeah, so something like this, even if it was taken out of context, would, the, yeah, you know, it in- could be costly, especially if she doesn't have any, the support of. I mean, she's got she has got the support of everyone above you. Because she's she's at the top. So. Well, there's a similar thing. Well, that's a joke. You can be at the top. You can be the CEO. But this is a thing that could bring you down. So mm. this is why they would risk. But if you take the time to read what's in here, it's it's not kind. It's no. it's not kind words. But she isn't she isn't talking about any hate. She isn't talking about um, a hatred for someone on the basis of a characteristic. Mm. She's talking about basically um a diversity hire she's talking about someone who's been given um an unfair advantage and she's annoyed about that that's what she's complaining about and it's it's an interesting one to try and work out does charlie brooker think 
she really has said something horrible or, you know, if she's talking a bit like, say, a similar situation with, uh, what was it John Lewis? Made, made a big deal of, you know, promoting someone who was very good for their ESG points. It right. did not go well. And then that woman ends up fired. And it's a, it's an absolute disaster. It's that kind may, of situation. May, yeah, they, they might be looking at that and, and using that as the mm. inspiration for this particular clip. I don't know if that happened after if this, yeah. this came out afterwards. Is, is he yeah. like, does Charlie Brooker think this is enough? Or has he toned it down? Does he think this is an injustice? I mean, oh, and I, the other thing to add on to that, um, just what we're talking about with the Easter eggs, um, look at this page, I told you. So you have here no, on no, the right, coming. you've got PM Callow to divorce. That is a reference to the first episode. Um, uh, what's it called? National Anthem. Uh, below, Victoria Scalane, trial latest. Hello, White Bear. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. Look up on the social media feed. So you've got a uh, Michael Callow again. So that's uh, first episode. And then you've got the second episode of season one, 15 million merits. Da, da, da. So this is uh, this is what I'm talking about. Um, mm. All those Easter eggs, they don't talk. There, there isn't really a solid connected universe. These are just little inside references. Um, we get to this final guy. I mean, he's a guy who's been called up for something evidently equiv. Well, I say equivalent, but I think the implication from what the way he shiftily says he was just looking as well. Mm -hmm. um, Almost like, yeah, yeah, like air quotes. Just and looking. not to stereotype, but uh, possibly with this casting, they meant he'd been a bit more active, possibly mm -hmm. with the involvement of some friends. Well, he's uh, he's older, isn't he? Would yeah you think. yeah i i really like the detail in this that before the fight he was swigging alcohol because mm. you like wonder how the heck this fight could end up working in kenny's favor but i think the fact that that guy has clearly just been absolutely swigging uh swigging the booze yeah is your good explanation we've lost mergoot it is his regular it really does happen at the same time every night. <laughs> <laughs> every time. Oh, well, dear. I think it was you, so hopefully you don't drop out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to be doing this on my own now. Oh, don't, TCG. I was so scared. I was so scared. <laughs> Mergu, I do see you, but, yeah, your camera was on. Okay. <laughs> right, I'll get you back on. You're ready again. Good. Right on time. <laughs> I know. It's it's like clockwork, isn't it? Um, yes, I thought that was a nice detail. Um, so in terms of the analysis, I think, again, I'm not trying to make it sound like Charlie Brooker only has one topic, but I, I've kind of got us a selection of episodes where there's a shared theme that bridges. Um, Waifu, yes, I absolutely was talking about Rotherham. I was talking about Rochester. Uh, I think that is the implication with the casting of that guy. If that's horribly prejudiced of me, I apologise. But mm. I think with this specific context, that's probably what they're getting at. Although you could say this was 2013, and even though the existence of grooming gangs was being talked about uh, by certain groups way back in the 90s, uh, it didn't really achieve widespread attention I'm, until 2014. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to say I don't think that was the intention. It would be a, an interesting... Uh, Maybe interesting unintended link there, but oh man, this guy, this their whole exchange just absolutely made my stomach sink. I've got to say, yeah, it was um, great because again, uh, like you, you kind of like, oh man, he's got to fight to the, oh no, what he's got, he's got to fight this guy, oh no, oh, man, I hope he survives. And it's like, I just looked at one or two photos, and I was like, wait a minute, that's not what you said earlier. <laughs> he's like, yeah, me too. And then as soon as he goes, like, how young were they? I was like. Oh my god! Right, I don't care who walks out of this one now. Genuine heart dropping I into was, your shoes, just yeah. And I, I thought it would ruin the ending. I, I genuinely thought it would uh, the ending would be ruined for me, uh, but it, mm. it but it wasn't because <laughs> of troll faces. <laughs> <laughs> Did but, you? I get. Are we possibly? By the way, Jerome Flynn's acting in this absolutely oh. amazing. Like. Oh, he's so good. 
just I, I had to get his acting in the scene where he comes in and his wife knows. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask you, is Trollface too close to the bone? I don't think so. At the time, think... it was very popular. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Well, that's the thing. I know Trollface, but I just... It seemed a little... I know... I was struggling because it was so on the nose to post that guy, and I just... It was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah it, it, was, it was funny. Chan strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, 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 had, I had no problem with it. Obviously, the first, the first time you see it, you're like, hang on, are they just sort of like, lol? Look what we made you do. And then obviously it's like, oh no, actually no, they are still revealing everything. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brutal. So, what Mega. do you think it was? What do you think it was saying about justice? And to uh, get that topic started, oh. I just thought I'd go back to this. The top, uh, the thing he's downloading is called Shrive. Mm. Um, now we're just past Easter, and <laughs> we don't talk about shriving much these days. But you probably have heard of Shrove, as in Shrove Tuesday. Yeah, it's from yeah. Shriving. It's the idea of um, I might mangle this, but it, it's it's uh, purging sins, expunging sins, expunging guilt. Um, and oh, that's interesting. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. yeah. The these guys all they kind of shrive. They, you know, nice they're, foreshadowing. They're, yeah, their their sins are made known and cleared mm. of them in a way. It's brought out into the open from where it can be dealt with. I'm not trying to say the hacker known as 4chan is an agent <laughs> of great justice here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, ah, oh, do you know what? I, yeah, the, the hackers did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah. I, I, okay. I'm, look, I'm, I'm a simple guy, right? I'm a simple guy. I, 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 I see somebody like this and I think let's punish them in the worst way possible. Mm. Uh, and I think that if anything, I think the hacker known as 4chan didn't go far enough. <laughs> <laughs> but what I about they... poor Jerome Flynn? Like he was a bad boy, but he was a bad boy. But you know, he didn't have to fight to the death with anybody. He, you know, he he did a he did oh, a job true. and and he went home. You know, he still got caught out because you know, naughty boy. Yeah. Uh, mm. But You're right, Maverick. They also found a couple serial killers. They also they helped uncover uh, one cheese pizza ring that I know of that wasn't. Comet Pizza, but when 4chan and their autism get together to solve crime, they can do wondrous things. Otherwise, you they get bored and start looking for things like Shia LaBeouf's flagpole. Hey, hey, hey! Come on! Oh, now. that was that, amazing! Come on! That that was a worthy campaign. Do don't 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 undermine that. That was a worthy campaign. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i i, I don't know I, I i didn't think that the, like obviously like they shouldn't be doing the things that they were doing but mm. then again batman shouldn't be doing the things that he's doing it was it, for me it was just vigilante justice mm. i think back to what connor said um when you know there is such a lack of official justice, proper justice. Mm -hmm. Why not? In fact, I, I make the argument that actual personal justice is much better and much more moral. Yeah. Because a state justice is always going to be sort of ring fenced by the by other needs, other considerations. A classic example would be um, if the state simply doesn't have enough prison space. Uh, someone will get a lesser sentence. Mm. Nothing to do with their crime, simply to do with logistics. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, if you've listened to my commentary for A Nightmare on Elm Street, I take massive issue with the fact that the parents did absolutely nothing wrong. They, oh my God. They, no, no. Yeah, they gave Freddy Krueger a uh, child grape feeder and uh, murderer 
a kerosene makeover <laughs> because <laughs> he was arrested. They followed the official process, but literally the paperwork for a search was screwed up and therefore the sentence was thrown out. Therefore, the system refused to punish Freddy. So the parents, do they say, oh, bum, I guess that's why you do your paperwork? Or do they uh, do they crispy fry him? Based parents, frankly. Yeah. See, back in the eighties, right? Four Chan mm. was actually the parent teachers. Uh, was actually the parents association. <laughs> well, they didn't have the internet back then, parents. so they had exactly. To, uh... So they had to meet up in real life, and they had to go and dish out this thing in real time. Yeah. Mm. It's um. Ah, oh, I'll go. I'll go to this final end image here, but. In terms of, yeah, Mergu, and anything from you uh, on on what this says about justice? It's, I think I've already said it. It started as thinking it was a crime caper, and it was everybody involved in the crime caper had a crime that needed to be redressed, and the hacker did it. And mm. I agree with it. Although I would, well, uh, okay, I'm gonna walk. I'm, I'm not gonna walk it back, uh, but I will say that not every one of them had a crime. I mean, if if we believe that the, uh, you can say that maybe two of them did um, a crime according to the hacker. Yeah. Oh, well, mm. I'd I'd say maybe well, crimes, but also perhaps immorality. That's a better one. Punishing, yeah, punishing like degenerate behavior, I suppose. Mm. You know, they hate one, you know, that they, they attack one guy for, I think, I, I I think it's fair to say proper with the, with the first guy that we, we meet who hands the cake over, perhaps he was like a closeted homosexual. Yeah. And so, you know, ex, you know, there, there's no crime in that. It, they just, they just wanted to, yeah. they just wanted to explode. Likewise, there's no crime with what the CEO did. It's just distasteful. And, but it would have also been hugely damaging to her reputation. Mm. Um, in this even, specific moment, in this specific whereas, moment, yeah, yeah. you know, 10 years down the line, 10 years previously, you don't she was know just, what opinion well, will get you screwed. Well, if she had said those things in Scotland from the 1st of April, oh yeah, then, you know, then she'd be, she'd probably be uh, facing a judge. Um, and likewise, even, even with Hector, like, okay, yeah, he's getting an escort. I mean, I don't think that's necessarily illegal I, 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 in, in, in that regard, Minor. obviously. Minor. Yeah. Yeah. I think up, up to a, up to a certain point, I think, you know, you know, they can accompany, you know, you can pay for someone to, to hang around, to, 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 to accompany you somewhere, but it's, it's the bit they do after it's the aftercare. I think mm -hmm. they get a little bit funny with. Uh, from a legal perspective but even then like it, it's more of the immor immor immorality with him cheating on his wife mm -hmm. you know he's got kids his family you know he shouldn't be doing those things it's just the last two at the end who mm -hmm. are both essentially a, the equivalent of each other and they're mm -hmm. the ones who are being you know one of them has to kill the other and then the other one gets arrested so they're the only two people that see a a, a justice of sorts that I suppose fit the crime. One of them gets their life uh, deleted, mm. uh, and the other one is now essentially, you know, caught by the old bill. And uh, <laughs> and also, it's heartbreaking as well. The mum as well. Uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. When she phones up, when she phones Kenny, and you know, you hear how distressed she is, and how upset she is, and how shocked. And um, again, I, I I just I just take my hat off to the acting, and like, you, you, it's just mm. yeah. Yeah. It was just fan it was a fantastic way to close it off. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was my favorite episode of the three, yeah. just because the twists and turns of it, endless escalation. I, I said to you backstage, I found this. I, I mean, obviously, I've seen it before, but I found this close to unwatchable because of how tense I was. <laughs> um, I became extremely grateful for all the humour that um, Hector threw in. Like Jerome <laughs> Flynn was incredibly funny in this, um, which was a very welcome yeah. relief because I was getting so stressed watching this. Yeah, it, it is quite it's quite intense, isn't it? Uh, Patrick Bateman, yes, uh, this is uh, one <laughs> of those episodes. Oh wait, there's more. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one or two. Oh, two for which, definite. 
What's Charlie Brooker trying to tell us? <laughs> what is he trying to do? Um, and Adam Loves Horror has uh, covered a yeah. point I was going to mention here. So I'll, I'll just get that up now. That's really handy. Um, uh, dropping a super chat saying Radiohead could have used Karma Police here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would have been interesting, but the, the song they used is Exit Music for a Film, which first showed up in Baz Luhrmann's Romeo Plus Juliet, um, which long-term viewers of this channel will know that I have a huge soft spot for. Uh, I I am weak for that film. I adore it. Um, so that song turning up here was great. Can we also just talk about the speaking of the music? You just reminded mm. me. Uh, so so after they get the car and they and they're driving to their destination, aka the bank, they have to stop off to get petrol. And um, I, I, I really I, I really love um, when Hector makes Kenny go inside to pay for the petrol, and all you hear in the background, it's almost like it's on a loop. Is have a nice day. Oh, it's have so a sad. nice day. <laughs> it's like on on loop. Mm. Um, yeah, it's like obviously they are not having a nice day. <laughs> oh, brutal irony. The comedy of dropping. Uh, oh yeah, that bit is yeah. And obviously, yeah, goes, what the Magnum condoms for his monster dong? Well, it's that, and also when he when he, when he leaves the petrol station after paying for the petrol, and he's got like one of the uh, one there's a woman there who's like one of Hector's wife's friends from 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 mm. the school that their kids go to. <laughs> And it's just like this awkward dialogue. Oh, this is uh, this is my nephew, and uh, oh, okay. Uh, and they're in the car, and he's like speeding. She doesn't You're really say the much. Wrong way, wrong yeah, yeah. way. Yeah, like the phones are going off. It's just like you know that you know can't really look. And she's sort of like almost like interrogating them as well. Mm. And then uh, yeah, and then obviously when he starts speeding, he nearly runs someone over. <laughs> He does like a 180 when he eventually pulls up. Um, and yeah. sort of like, oh, yeah, okay, bye, bye. <laughs> that was a nice tension breaker followed by it raising was, the tension. I, I, I felt like that was a quintessentially English moment. Like, you're not complaining because at the end of the day, he's doing you a favor by driving you home. <laughs> it's such a terrible drive. Like, it's one of those things where as soon as she walks in the house, she's going to be like, John, oh, my God. God, Hector's, I, I, I think Hector's kidnapped a child. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, it's just brutal comedy there. It's it it really it really helps in an episode that is absolutely pitch black. Otherwise, just oh, <laughs> rough stuff, rough stuff. Yeah, that comedic moment did break it a little bit, but just. The tension was kept up just by the insistence of the hacker on the phone. Mm. You're going the wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. And the more he, the hacker got insistent, the faster he went. He was swerving in and out of traffic and cutting lanes. Yeah. And it felt so, obviously it was shot in Britain, but it felt so British. Loved it. I just, <laughs> it felt great. All those little touches really helped. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I, this this closing music I just thought was perfect. It was very epic. I'm very, um, I've got a soft spot for it. Did the closing music here from Radiohead exit music for a film? Did it work for you? Okay. I didn't really notice it. Okay. To tell you the truth, I was more involved thinking about the story than the music. Mm. Um, sometimes in movies, the soundtrack carries it. Other times it was just background noise because I was thinking about the episode itself. Mm. Oh, fair play, fair play. Poss possibly just because I love the song. I, I think it really helped when they it built into something really epic and then the montage was there. Mm -hmm. And again, it's it's an idea, an extremely relatable idea that has only got more prominent of just people being destroyed online mm -hmm. obviously in kenny's case it reaches out much more into the real world because he's done absolutely awful things and therefore deserves a jail and it's very noticeable that the episode just stops a second the police touch him um, mm -hmm. um cuts off there this reminded that this this uh, this sort of for me mirrored a little bit of um the streams we did a few weeks back when we looked at that adult swim video and how that ended. 
Oh, yeah. The, uh, I know it's, it's completely different, but it was just sort of like... Unedited footage of a bear. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. And how those two ended with just the police lights and, like, the shocked expression of the of of, of our, like, sort of, I wouldn't say protagonist for this guy, but our our lead actor for this, for both pieces. It just They, they really sort of echoed for me. Hmm. Yeah. Um, gosh. There's an overall theme in this of technology used or misused has enabled us uh, has enabled our sort of failings to be made very public mm. um, and you gain an idea of just like how creepily aware someone can be of all our movements if thanks to technology like literally tracking them because of the phones access mm. to all their contacts access to their webcam and I would like to discuss that, but I think we can literally take that same theme over into the next episode. I agree. Yeah, definitely. Do you see? Do you see what I did? Yeah. There's a nice there's a thread. There's a thread. <laughs> um. So I will move us over to our final episode, Archangel. By the way, this was um. Would this surprise you that this is one of the least liked episodes? Uh, no. It's such a slow burn that most people wouldn't have patience for it. This yeah. is yeah, yeah. This is this is one of those where I, I, I it it didn't it it didn't sort of connect. Why? Well, not that it didn't connect, but it, it, I I felt uncomfortable watching it for for most of it. Again. Ooh parents perspective like I, I like don't get me wrong i as soon as as soon as i got sort of like the synopsis of this uh laid down i was like oh man oh no oh no mm. yeah, yeah yeah um so i i'll i'll give us a quick rundown by the way i'll admit i'm gonna confess tcg <laughs> I already confessed in our group chat, but I'll confess for the benefit of chat. I threw this in originally for the thematic link, but I also wanted to kind of throw you a dud. Like I thought, <laughs> let's have two absolute bangers, oh. but then throw you an episode that people didn't like. So we've got a bit of fairness, you know. Um, but I ended up absolutely loving this on the rewatch. I didn't like it the first time round at all, mm. but um, uh, sorry, I'm getting confused by the chat. I shouldn't read the chat. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, is it the Freddy also suffered a slow burn? <laughs> I, I was enjoying Devonte's puns. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. ah. All right, I'll, I'll get into it. So, Archangel. Um, yeah, I I love this. Um, I've. <laughs> I've kept us with this frame because this frame is basically a metaphor for the whole episode. Um, we start off with, well, I should also say this is directed by Jodie Foster. Yeah. Yeah. I mm -hmm. saw that at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, she'd, I looked into this a little bit before we started because I knew she'd done work on movies. So she directed a lovely little film called Little Man Tate. But she also did an episode of Tales from the Dark Side in mm -hmm. 1988. Oh, yeah. Now, we didn't cover that anthology series, but we did cover its movie. Um, so, yeah. Um, and she's been on a bit of a rampage ever since, um, say, 2013. She has been enjoying uh, directing. She's done a bunch for Netflix. Orange is the New Black, House of Cards, Money Monster, I think, may also... Okay, no, that is not a Netflix. Yeah, but she's uh, she's been doing well on Netflix, basically, and on-demand stuff. Um, yeah, but, but Netflix I, I, just hire anybody these days. Oh, rough, rough. No, she, she's been having fun moving into it. Um, it's not material I would have thought she'd do, but hey. So I have chosen this episode called Archangel. I've chosen this screen because this screen is a metaphor for it. We start off with a woman, a single mother, you will note, very importantly, giving mm. birth, uh, having a cesarean, and there is a screen separating her from her baby. 
do you get it? A screen mm -hmm. separates her from her kid. Oh, you, you get it? Do you? Oh. Do you? All right. Sorry for the um, assault on the ears, there, folks. <laughs> the the main thing is that the barrier is the cause of her terror. The baby is removed. She can't hear anything. She can't see anything of the baby, and so she starts to panic because it's the unknown. But then she's able to see the baby and it's brought in. So she has this connection, the baby with her, beyond absolute carnage. She's only comforted when the baby is with her. That is all in this opening scene. It is perfect. This scene right here, metaphor. It Great stuff. True. It rings true. As, again, like the first, those first moments, man, when you, that, that moment, that time from, birth to hearing the first cry feels like a lifetime it mm. really does oh my god i so i was completely on her side <laughs> like em empathy wise when she oh, was like yeah. is my baby okay okay and they're like don't worry it's fine i'm like no is the baby okay please <laughs> i'm like it's fine it's fine but is the baby okay seriously well oh, oh, yeah see I, I knew the baby was gonna be all right it's oh, a you. tough couple of it's a tough minute isn't it yeah, yeah yeah 30 seconds it feels long um and getting flashbacks. Based. You can be on her side. I think this is the first mm. episode without really a yeah. big villain. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, the interesting thing about this episode is it, it kind of does sort of tap into every parent's sort of innate need and desire to know exactly where the kids are and what they're doing at all times, um, mm. especially in this sort of day and age, because they do sort of tap, uh, touch upon it, because uh, when mm -hmm. she, she's um, when the granddad's uh, pushing the 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 kid on the swing and they're talking about mm. you know like uh you know back in my day where you just used to open the gate and let you run out and, and do whatever mm. you know mm -hmm. just leave the door open for you. and she's like yeah but you know my arm you, my arm did get broken you know it did break my arm once and he was like mm. yeah and how is it now like wh where is parents these days and I think there's you know solid reason for it but mm. we definitely keep a tighter yeah like rain on our on our kids these days because mm. I mean even even as I was a kid. Like, you know, we just used to go out on our bikes and go all, go all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, my mum was a warrior, big time. Like, she wouldn't let me go to, like, town on my own until I was, like, 13. But it was my mate's mum who was like, come on. You know, let, let <laughs> like, we, and from that moment, we, we were all over the place. Like, <clears throat> uh, but, yeah, like, I just, I, I couldn't picture doing that, like, having my kids do that, especially mm. where now and... You you highlight you've picked up on something really important. Um, mm. She breaks her arm; it gets better. What's her yeah. job? What's She's the mother's a job? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So possibly breaking the arm and having it healed was a really formative experience for her, her that has ended up kind of directing her career yeah. and giving her and, a purpose. Yeah, and and you see how that impacts her daughter. Because of the, well, you've got the, you've got the great like that that filter there, um, the trauma the filter. filter, yeah, and you see how mm. it impacts her daughter psychologically. I wanted to get Which this I up was as fascinating. Yeah, I wanted to get this up as the other metaphor. Mm. Um, this dog is the daughter, <laughs> Wait, chained <what? laughs> in. Yeah, you can see, but kept like restricted, kept on a short leash. Um, and as a like lashing out because it doesn't understand. Ultimately, when the daughter is able to connect with the dog, they're best mates. Mm -hmm. But it's overprotective. But when they can lower the barrier, the daughter actually gets on. And then just before the daughter runs away, the dog is gone. Yeah. Foreshadowing. Yeah. We. So. Oh, uh, I thought. The yeah. I, I thought it was more likely that the maybe the dog had died because time had passed. No, no, it's all a big brain metaphor for big brains. <laughs> I'm not reaching. I mean, the owners have gone, clearly, because the house is for sale. I thought the dog had just died because, like, 15 years had passed. It's a comedy metaphor. Which, by the way, we know, we know it's 15 years. True. Because it's made very clear in one scene. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm true. like, oh my Walking god, oh, god oh, no. disavow, absolute yeah. disavow. <clears throat> All right, I should probably talk about what happens in this. Yeah. Again, this is one of those episodes. Um, one of the phrases to describe Black Mirror is it's set 15 minutes in the future. Barely an exaggeration. They even have a 
a problem sometimes that something they script just happens um to yeah. their um most notably the plot of the first episode involving a pig but um we won't go into that in in this uh ep stream hold on um, what? <laughs> yeah look at look at what happens uh in the first episode and then consider a certain david cameron's ex exploits <laughs> <laughs> anyway so this is one of those incredibly believable technology you could see this happening um our protagonist here whose name i of course do not know what's her blooming name marie marie is a single mother raising her daughter sarah with the help of her father russ um Sorry, so uh, Marie's father, Sarah's grandfather. Um, she gets herself involved in a trial to give uh, Sarah a transplant, a small chip. Uh, Black Mirror frequently calls them cookies. That's the, uh, That tends to be the term they use over and over again for uh, implants into the brain. Um, oh, yeah, Adam Latour has got a great one here. Nosedive is another example of something Black Mirror did that then basically happened or came into our knowledge. I'll yeah. keep that comment up on screen. So Nosedive talked about a social credit system. China pretty much launched theirs um, publicly afterwards. Maybe check the timelines on that. I'm not sure. But anyway, I don't think Black Mirror would have done it if the social credit system was already public. Anyway, we can check the timelines. Anyway, um, so this implant, this tiny, neat implant that's done as part of a trial with Archangel, the company, um, lets the mother, through an app, see all the vital stats on Sarah. So noticing her iron's a bit low here, but also can see literally what Sarah sees, see through her eyes, all presented through an app on this pad here. Um, and also and, adjust her daughter's vision to mm. occlude any traumatic events. Yes. Yeah. So that's a filter that you can put on or off. Um, uh, so when she sees something scary, like a, a spoopy dog, or when she draws a spoopy drawing with a bit of blood, it's automatically filtered for her. And she basically lives with that filter on uh most of her life and it the mother gets used to parenting constantly looking at the screen and seeing what her daughter sees um and it causes some issues um oh the the chip also can pick up when something is spiking her cortisol mm -hmm. so if she sees something stressful and that's what activates the filter and it is kind of useful because uh when her granddad has a heart attack her cortisol spikes. This alerts the mum, and the mum is able to uh, get help to the dad. Yeah. Now, the dad basically dies uh, over the next scene, but we have a time jump for that, so do not worry. Um, yeah. Dad, 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 the, the, the dad was saved. It... Yeah, he was saved briefly. He was saved briefly. And let's be honest, this is a great episode because it highlights all the good things that happen so yeah the grandfather is literally saved because of this implant um trip uh sort of dangers are literally avoided because of this implant when stupid dumbass kids are showing awful footage in the playground a very believable story mm -hmm. uh she can't see it mm. <laughs> but the downside is that when she's doing this oh excuse me when um sorry train of thought because she has a filter on the whole time so the extreme content filter she misses out on a lot of experiences and it causes some stress so when she realizes she can't even see blood she starts trying to test the boundary she stabs her hand a bit she has an extreme outburst um and so because of that she goes to see a psychiatrist um, who checks her response and she literally can't tell that this is a confrontation scenario. Yeah. 
He's testing her with a load of pictures, trying to see if she can understand it. She can't. She just thinks these two people are talking. Um, she thinks these two people <laughs> just hanging out, you know. Piggyback. <laughs> yeah, it's a piggyback. So she's not able to process things. And so the show literally says, is she autistic? Mm -hmm. And they, they raised that idea. I had to do it. I had to do it. It's the first thing I thought of when I saw that. <laughs> so they, they try and avoid getting in trouble by saying specifically it is not the tism, uh, but it effectively is like the tism. They're treading the line. So they turn the filter off. They agree to relax the control and let her see things. Oh. Immediately, an awful kid uh, by the name of Trick starts showing her the worst things, starts showing her sore, starts showing her um, extremely spicy prawn and like grim stuff. And then starts showing her um, an enrichment video from Afghanistan. Oh, if you get God, me. yeah, yeah. It's horrible. It's presented kind mm. of humorously, but it's also this is exactly what happens. This is exactly what happens. I guess other people notice the saw reference. It's so true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, she's instantly exposed to that, and we get another time jump. Um, and I'm trying. I've I've kind of lost the plot. Do you guys remember what it is that makes um, the mother decide to not rely on the Archangel system to put the screen away? Ah, oh, it was. Oh, God, here we go. It was... I was just trying to remember now. I've lost it. What was it? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> no, it's gone. It's gone for me too. <laughs> okay. I What's think she just decides, thing? doesn't she? I think she just says, I, I oh, think right. she, yeah, got, I, I think it's, it's a psychologist. The... Yeah. The psychologist says that, okay, all these effects are basically autism. Effectively, it's autism because of. No, they, um, they, they didn't say that because she's because they talked about the spectrum and they said she's not on it. Yeah. Uh, I think they're trying to avoid trouble, but effectively they are saying she's having trouble processing emotions. It's like autism, although yeah. specifically it is not, which I think was a good choice, to be honest. Um, yeah, but the mother is just worried, what do I do? This is harming my daughter. It's making her act out. So the psychiatrist says, to be honest, you can just put it away. In a way. Yeah, because they... Um, because they, yeah, that's right. Because they say you can't, mm. you can't remove the chip, mm. um, but you can put the, you can put the screen, you can put the screen away. Because they, they, because they talk about the fact that it's banned in Europe. Yeah, that was uh, one of the things I was going to say was yeah. the least realistic. I'm afraid the idea that the the EU or the UK Parliament would protect us from official spying. Nice know, try, right? prism leaks. Look at Scrump's prism leaks uh, stream called "Through a Prism Darkly." Give it a look, and uh, you will get some very interesting information. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they because because at the time when she has this implant, they're they're still going through the trial phase, and then yeah, you learn in, in during that time through that through that dialogue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that for some reason, the EU decided that it was bad. Why the EU would decide that, I don't know. Because like you say, it com it's completely opposite <laughs> to what they would they would do. They look at China and go, ah, oh, oh, good good example, good idea, China. Let's 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 do that. Um, yeah, they say that it's going to be banned in America by by the fall, which again, you know, given the fact that you know the whole NSA scandal. Um, yeah, optimistic, think, uh, I would say. Yeah, optimistic. yeah, yeah. You know, you see, you see, you sat, you sat, you sat, you're trying to make these uh, these these uh, these bodies seem very trustworthy, but mm. no, 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 no. We 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 know we're we're enlightened individuals. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, and then yeah, it's at that point where they, he's like, you know, yeah. So we can't do anything about the actual chip itself. That's going to be there. But yeah, put the screen down, love. Mm, be a mother. It's, and I thought this was beautifully told. Just like the difficulty, like the literally, how will we cope? Uh, how will we get used to it when I can't see through your eyes? Yeah, that level of trust that they have to have. Um, I thought that was beautifully done. Highly related. Like think of how can I say. Think of if mobile phones went away. 
mm. and you can like instantly call your kids, you'd you'd struggle. You are yeah. used to being able to have that instant contact. If you weren't suddenly able to contact your kid if you got worried, that would be very difficult to get used to. And yet all three of us on this panel lived through that. We were all, we were all yeah. kids yeah, before mobile phones. Parents, so I'm an expert. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. it's watching in the 90s when people were evolving into helicopter parents um, and then having a daughter of my own, my wife was a helicopter parent. I tried to get my daughter to experience new things and got shot down a lot, which, mm. eh. It is, it is the more maternal instinct is to, to shy away from the risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I find it interesting because uh, it's weird though, because this, this device I think up to a certain point has its benefits mm. with all functionality, but then, yeah, you, you very quickly find out in this episode that there's a point where you need to stop using some of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've, so they step away, they do the, the brave thing. And, uh, unfortunately one night, uh, Sarah does a 15 year old Sarah, and they're very sure that you will know she's 15 does what is a bit of common, quite common, does a bit of a, a round robin, lies to her mum about where she's going and decides to go parting with a disreputable young street lad by the name of Trick, the same same scruffy guy who uh, showed her prawn. He looks like um, an anorexic, um, was it Adam, what's his name? The geezer who plays Kylo Ren. Adam Driver. Oh, Adam Driver, yeah, he looks like an anorexic Adam Driver. And he is a driver of a van. <laughs> yeah. Common theme in this, do not trust anyone in a van, okay? Oh, the other moral. Yes, moral of these stories, stop watching. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, Adam Lazar. Thank you again for the super chat. Much appreciated. You're very generous tonight, and uh, it's much appreciated. Um, yeah, so um, Sarah lies, gets caught out, causes a panic, and the mother has the option. What does she do? What does she do? She can't get her by phone. She's worried. She gets the screen out. But when she gets the screen out, she sees her, her precious 15-year-old princess getting stooped by some street punk. <laughs> deeply, <laughs> deeply subversive. Absolutely awful. He's given her the toffee prod, and she is using language from an adult movie. Disgraceful. Absolutely awful. It's quite shocking. Like she ch listens at the worst moment, hearing yeah, her daughter use porn talk. And I thought it's very good that Sarah explicitly like recognizes its talk she learned from from prom. Yeah, it's it's weird, but yeah, I I had to get that screen cap because I thought that says everything. Um, and then you've got the breach of trust because once she's looked, she knows. All the trust is gone, and she's then kind of hooked at following goings on on the screen again because the trust is not there. Um, ultimately, this means she sees Sarah doing even worse things that are quite common to teenagers, trying drugs, getting stupped again. Um, and she, the mum gets found out when she slips she sorry, she procures a morning yeah, after pill, sure. yeah, for her daughter and uh delivers it to her in a smoothie surreptitiously. This causes Sarah to be sick, and Wikipedia is very, very upset, very traumatized by the fact that the school nurse says that the emergency contraceptive pill induces abortion rather than preventing pregnancy. I believe the term is terminates a pregnancy. Um this is what we call splitting hairs. But Wikipedia was terribly upset about that. I will move on. Um, so, yeah, once she's found out, you get to this scene. This is the key scene for me. And I'm sorry I've taken so long to get to it. Um, you guys were amazing on your summaries. I'm, I'm drawn into this episode and I'm yammering. Um, but this brilliant scene... 
where Sarah finds the archangel screen and is able to see that her mum has been watching her. Mm. But most specifically, she looks through the camera and basically has to relive those deeds. <laughs> now, that's a really complex thing. She's annoyed at her mum for spying on her. But also, she knows her stuff is indefensible. Right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yep, 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 yep. That's the shock. I think mm -hmm. it's a shock of... It's a shock of realising what you've done in context. You can go along in the moment. We all have very subjective lives. But someone can give you an objective thing that completely shatters how you understand a situation. Hmm. And, and that's a tricky thing. There's People will do things that they can't defend, but in the moment seems like a good idea. This is, this is why your prime crime years are when you're a teenager because you're under these impulses of things you cannot justify. This is uh, what Sarah's experiencing. I think like it's the betrayal from her mum, but also the she's been confronted with her own transgressions and that's yeah, what she a, really can't handle. Yeah. It, it, it's quite double-edged, isn't it? Mm. And so she, I mean, she confronts her mum after this. It gets violent. The violence, I think, is less interesting, to be honest with you. Um, mm. It's sort of necessary continuation for the story. There's maybe an interesting argument that because of the filter, she was able to cause even more violence to her mother because she mm -hmm. couldn't see how much damage she was doing when she was smashing the screen on her face. Yeah. Um, but that bit's less interesting to me. The real interest is this scene here where she's made to confront it. Um, and just like Shut Up and Dance, we've got characters confronted with their own actions in a way that they um, never thought they would, being held to account for their own actions in a way they never would have been able to without technology. Yeah. Yeah, this, this was such an uncomfortable watch for me. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm seeing just... it through a parent's eyes and then remember what you got up to as a kid and trying to compare yeah. it to. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I just, it's really difficult for me to put my finger on, but um, I just, it's just if you, oh, I don't know, if if you're given that. I mean, we're not really, we're not really that far away from that technology anyway. You can just sort of call back about what you said about the phones. Mm -hmm. I mean, the phones, the phones that we have nowadays, and sort of like the Fitbits, that sort of technology. Parents can already do things like track the kids' heart rates, tra track the kids' locations at, at any time of day, and like you say, they're they're easily accessible. You know, through I don't know. I say let's do video calls, for example. You know, you mm. see, you can see where your child is, and uh, that, that sort of time. Obviously, there's the element of you have to pick up the phone to do that, but that sort of that sort of um, <coughs> excuse me, that technology exists, and obviously, like things like parental controls for filters, and you mm. know, those, it, 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 but it just takes it that step beyond. Um, and I have to be, I have to be honest. I think if we were given that sort of technology. And it was accessible to to parents. I I I doubt you'd find many that would turn away at that. Mm. And I'm not saying because I think, as I say, there there is a benefit to it, but it only goes so far, and then it becomes a breach of you know. Then it becomes a trust issue, a breach of trust, and I, I think at that point you you know like like you see in this that the relationship between the mum and daughter breaks down because of that breach of trust there's only so far that a parent can go mm. into a child's life before we have to sort of let them go and live their life and make their mistakes and do that sort of stuff yeah um that's and that's very balanced in this episode so yeah, i think it, it's i'm not just being edgy because, conservative by saying oh god no, no, no. he's a single mom it's like and, no actually that's really important she's someone yeah who and, has you know, <clears throat> done something that maybe maybe isn't ideal. Something hasn't yeah. worked out. We don't know. 
but she survived and she's doing her best with her kid. Of course, absolutely. But what you, yeah, and also what you've got to remember is the whole reason why she has the chip in the first place is because she lost her child for a few hours, mm. and you know that that was a tra- no, that was a traumatizing event for any parent, you know, and that that must have felt like a lifetime. And then you know, fast forward fifteen years later, okay, yeah, she's done around robbing. Kids do it all the time. You know, mm. we, we've, you know, I, 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 I done it. I said I was at a mate's actually. No, I was off somewhere <laughs> else. Uh, Mum always found out because mum didn't. We, we, you know, we got rightfully bollocked for it. But you know, it's something that happens. It's almost like a rite of passage thing into as as you're growing older. But you know, mm. having that previous experience in the past and mm. and having the tool to be, I need to make sure my child is safe. Again, you know, te- you, you present that to a parent guarantee you none of them would, would take a second chance at, 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 look, mm. at, at pulling it out the reason why she got to use you know she used it again after so many years was i in my view legitimate nice. um but it was no no but but obviously <laughs> she didn't, obviously not what she saw you know what she saw uh, uh, no 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 you know she was she was quite right to again she was right to approach that kid and be like stay the f away she's she's literally a fucking child what are you doing you absolute creepazoid i've got some mm. 4chan hackers that, that that would like to reach out to you um but it's 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 that trust because the trust was broken by the daughter who lied to her mum and then she felt compelled to check again and again and again Mm-hmm. I, yeah, you know, it yeah. is. In my view, it's, the, it's, it's the daughter's behaviors that break the mum's trust first, and then the daughter takes that as a, oh, you've broken my trust. It's like, well, no, you've broken mine. I can't trust you because you lied to me. Put it this way: if the they didn't have that technology, yeah. but the mum kind of knew. One of the other mums had said, "Oh, I think they hang out around this park." Yeah, and the mum had just driven there. And found yeah. her daughter getting stubbed. Yeah, it's it's the equivalent. It's, 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 it's it the equivalent of walking wrong? in. Yeah, because then it would be it would be a more direct thing. Like the, the, mm. that's the thing. The conversations, the actions that take place after that are consistent with you know had she just turned up there. Um, but it is almost sort of like you know there, there is this almost like they don't speak about it. Like the next morning, she doesn't bring bring it up. No, you know because the trust it, is I, gone. The mum yeah, should the have is- that awkward convo. She should have. She should have at that point said, "Where were you last night?" And if she she continued, like, "I know you weren't there. You know, you had me worried. I ended up mm. checking this thing. I said I wouldn't do it, but you put me in a position where I had to check it. I saw you with this guy. It ends. It stops. Like she'd be pissed. Don't get me wrong. She'd be pissed. But then mm-hmm. so would any other teenager who's told that you know you can't hang out with a boy or you know you can't hang out with this girl. You know, you it, it would be a natural conversation. But that but that that device." breaks that natural sort of chain and it makes everything secretive so the mum was justified in what she did because she couldn't trust her daughter anymore but she also couldn't have that conversation with her out front she True. she wanted to know how far it went she could have just but if you didn't have that technology yeah it, it would have all mm. it, it would have it, yeah. like, it wouldn't have ended the way it did basically i'm i'm really glad you said that because this is one of those cases where I think we're meant to believe someone is a villain. Not a chance. No. No. No, um, no, no. Sorry. She sees her. She thinks her daughter is somewhere. She can't find that. She sees her daughter's at an abandoned, a, a, a far off location, a lake. Yeah. Of course. You know, she gets, she does a sensible thing. She, what if she'd been kidnapped? What if there was a bad situation occurring? Of course. Sensible mother. Should the mother at that point be like, no, I will respect her privacy? Or yeah. should the mother say, I'm sorry, this has gone wildly off what I thought my kid told me. Uh, I've got to find out what's going on. Yeah. She would have driven there if she didn't have the eyes option. The eyes option, uh, seeing through her daughter's eyes, could have revealed her being assaulted, being mm. you know, like anything awful happening. Instead, it simply revealed that she's got terrible taste in teenage boys. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> mum yeah. did absolutely nothing wrong. The, the complicating factor is what is enabled by this technology. Mm-hmm. That is a thing. Um, and there's what I think is so balanced in this. I'm sorry to yammer. I'm just passionate about this episode. Um, is the brilliance that the mother is imperfect. The mother's yeah. made loads of mistakes, is making mistakes. When Sarah goes off to get stupped by greasy uh, tween Adam Driver, um, 
the mum's off stupping i think was he a client it, yeah it was the client from earlier mm -hmm. it, and from, don't from we know the earlier, client yeah. has a wedding or a wife because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think he dropped that so the mum is enabling adultery the mum has got stuff that she isn't proud of would not want to be seen but she doesn't have the chip in the eye the issue is technology the issue here is what has been enabled by technology yeah mm. the the mother basically shows that okay we're this is really good at showing that the issue is that we are imperfect beings and we all make mistakes uh, as with the last episode some mistakes are much more severe than others but we all transgress and the complexity is how this sort of panopticon style technology that is a, a effectively an all-seeing eye um a prison where everything everyone's in a prison where they could be being watched at any moment that's a panopticon um the ultimate in social credit well exactly the extent to which we let this be merciless like um i have a long i no not not too long. I have about a 30 minute video on Black Mirror on my channel um, talking about the episode from season one, the entire history of you. And I that touches on some of these ideas as well. It would not be unfair to say that Black Mirror revisits a couple of concepts over and over again, but always in an interesting way. Um, and in that, I talk about how a similar technology, a similar implant effectively raises a kind of comparison to the god's eye view like god's omniscience um but the sort of difference there is that with god's omniscience you also have mercy you have a, a knowledge that we are transgressing we always fail um we will sin and that's why we need the forgiveness because we're terrible for it whereas this technology does not have that it just does the omniscience. It just judges. And the punishment that you can get from that judgment can seem absolutely merciless. Sorry, absolute ramble from me. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It um, does a good job of describing this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I just, I had so many of those thoughts going in my head. It's, um, you might get some kind of perfect justice. Like you can say, okay, just as with shut up and dance, you could say, well, you know what, Sarah, if you weren't lying and if you weren't doing drugs, you'd have no trouble. Yeah. It's nothing, nothing to hide and nothing to fear. Right. Do you know, sorry. <laughs> I have do to we say want to live like that? <laughs> just because you mentioned shut up and dance mm. what really wound me up about that episode not wound me up because it was a wonderful episode <laughs> but what wound me up is because is because of how much it hoodwinked me throughout that episode mm. i was thinking to myself my man should stand up to these hackers right because if dsp could survive a scandal like that getting you know catching you know getting caught oh. jerking off right? <laughs> dsp <laughs> can oh, survive oh, anything if there's nuclear oh, war the only things left are cockroaches and dsp oh, oh, and he'll be hitting that. the cockroaches right. up for donations <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, so if dsp can survive it you can survive it kenny oh wait no dsp didn't even do that you disgusting <laughs> freak oh dear anyway, sorry. <laughs> sorry sorry um yeah i just I, th I think Brooker is highlighting the fact that technology is really enabling a kind of, yeah, panopticon it in is. which, and the nothing to nothing to hide, nothing to fear doesn't work. Mm. Because frankly, we all have something to hide. And, and sometimes our mistakes, sometimes our screw ups, as we see with the mother, actually are the best thing that happened to us. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Dark side feel. <laughs> Awesome Your boy, Dark Side, Phil, always. Um, Adam Lazara, thank you so much. Uh, sending $5. Black Mirror has us ask questions of ourselves. Absolutely. As a parent, would you use this program? Oh, Death penalty. Well. Yeah. yeah how I would, how I would, would you not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, too, it's too 
I, I couldn't say with 100% with 100% confidence that I wouldn't use it if I had it if it was if it was given to me and it was something like you can you can track your ch child and you, again like I say there is a benefit to it at a certain age you know when mm. they're really young there is absolutely a benefit to it but in that in that stage of life when they become a teenager and you know they 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 you know they're going to start exploring the world you know they're going to be you know going through new experiences you know they're taking those first steps into adulthood there are some things that as a parent you, you, you should take a step back from absolutely um i think what it does though is it it changes the way you parent that, that mm. that's the thing and i think if as i say there are many parents who've walked on their, walked in on their kids <laughs> doing things that they shouldn't be doing as, yeah, as, as, the, as the mother experienced through the tab through the screen on this right and i'm not saying the kid like i'm talking like 17 18 you know much older right um you know those those, <laughs> those are awkward situations absolutely but what that screen does is it separates the two and it makes i think it made it very very awkward for them um, to, to to approach that and i think <clears throat> as i say you it doesn't make it any doesn't make those experiences or those, those situations any different in terms of like because they can happen in real life um but in in terms of how you navigate, it becomes very different because you can just sort of put it to one side and say, okay, she doesn't know I saw that, so therefore I don't have to broach it. Whereas... Yeah, I would... Being a parent myself, and just the way I was raised, it's I'd be tempted, but no, I'd err on the side of freedom. There are other much better ways of, um, yeah. if they've done wrong, get to know your kids so you know where the tells are. Yeah. It's, I, be more yeah. involved in your child's life. Don't just look at it from afar. Well, Don't become that... the devouring mother, the ultimate helicopter mom. Don't become the devouring mother in do, the end. Do you know, that's a great point because, uh, again, like in her formative years, in, in, in her daughter's formative years, you know, she spends more time. Well, you see her spending more time looking at the screen, watching mm -hmm. what her doing, rather than mm -hmm. actually being there with her daughter. And says, so, and, and no, she's not out in the kitchen when when um, the, the the kids get going up to get the get the cookies or the Oreos. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. saying no, no, just one. She's in another room watching it from the tablet and be like, oh no, 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 one, one cookie. Great, great you know. example of how you'd be like. I need it. What if what if my kid gets kidnapped? You know, I I lost mm. her in the park, and you know it was terrifying. Um, mm. But you end up using it for trivial stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah Adam mm. loves horror. Golf. Um, yeah, yeah. I say the reason, but I say again, the reason why she goes back to it is because her daughter lied to her, and mm. so I, I I can't see what the mum did in that in that at that point as as unjustified. She was panicked. Mm. She needed to know where her daughter was. Like why why you know why did she lie to me? I've had this bad experiences. Why she's got the bloody chip in her head in the first place? <laughs> now is a good time that I can use it to make sure she's safe. Oh my god, what is she doing? Is is that yeah? <laughs> you know, oh god, right. Okay. Oh, but that way, she's fine. She's fine. Uh, oh god um well she, yeah but like Dolphin yeah, has a good point if the technology existed wouldn't just be benevolent parents with their child's best interests in mind that would mm. have access to it absolutely it's true yeah uh just to finish super chat um adam loves horror continues so uh would you use this program and then death penalty abortion archangel use would be debated often yeah yeah, I, with death penalty, I, I assume you mean like it would be good evidence, which is a similar question uh, raised by uh, the season one, episode three. Um, and I see you commented afterwards that you actually found my channel through that uh, through that episode. Um, I'll tell you another thing. Adam loves horror. If I've if I've said this already, I apologize, but I'll say it to everyone here. There is a great channel called Last Things. Who has a video on Black Mirror called the scariest episode of Black Mirror I ever saw. Oh. And it is amazing. It is about an hour. This it is is one of those videos that changed how I make videos. Because I wish I had done something as good as his. Last things has been on this channel. He is a great guy. Um, so give that video a watch. It is the scariest episode of Black Mirror I ever saw by Last Things. I, th I think you'll love it. 
Uh, we've also had um, another super chat from Patrick Batman. Thank you so much. Um, you forgot it was Thursday, but then you remembered. You pulled it back um, for five pounds. Thank you very much. Uh, saying one of the biggest problems in the secular world is parents not leading by example. People want to have it both ways. Yep, it's yep. shown in this, and that yep. is that is the best lesson. Um, we all have failings, but we all need to make a bigger effort. That's the thing. Um, we're all going to fail. We're all going to mess up. But there's a sort of level of hypocrisy in this that um, doesn't help the mother. But it does also show that you screw up and it isn't necessarily the end of the life. Like Although we haven't seen the mum doing cocaine. so. Well, where, again, for me, where the mum fails is she doesn't communicate with the daughter. Mm, definitely that, that, that that's where she fails as a as oh, it's going to be harsh as a parent that that's where she fails in her duties by not having that conversation with her daughter and, and being up front with her and you know and actually explaining why she's using the tap you know, why she used the tablet this is why i used it on this on this mm. specific occasion and like i say if she nipped it in the bud earlier on she, she probably could have got away with not having to use it again like mm. she, she could have maybe had that conversation and you know re-established that trust and said right okay look that was that was for this reason you know obviously whatever um but because she doesn't have that conversation she, because she doesn't broach that topic she just continues to to monitor through the screen and then watches mm. her daughter slip further and then yeah that, that that's where she fails for, for me that's where she could have done better she could have just actually mm -hmm. been a parent as opposed to um a bystander effectively it's like these yeah. creepy little bugs. yes is yeah. that it's we <laughs> default to distance viewing yeah. they're even right there but they're looking through the screen they're looking through the screen mm. see there's a consistent theme consistent theme throughout the whole thing um yeah the daughter uh does run off after a violent encounter um yeah and then the oh mom my God, can't like, find her. how how on uh, yeah and how uh ominous is this ending like yeah you know what i notice about that it's a mirror yep yeah. mm. the truck they specifically chose a truck with big shiny mirrored sides is that saying she can't escape the screens she can't escape being viewed the fact that it's uh it's sort of extremely warped does that mean she's going forward with a kind of warped vision of herself warped sense of reality, from the yeah. experience? That's, That's probably what is going on there. Yeah. But she's, I, I, she's not heading anywhere good. Yeah. I mean, I, I was more sort of looking at it from the perspective of, you know, you know, she's hitchhiking as a 15 year old girl. And, you know, we've all seen the films where every bloody truck driver that agrees to hitchhike, he's always like some sort of creeper. It's like, Mm -hmm. Okay, now now she's put herself in da potentially in danger, and now her mum has no way of knowing whether her daughter's safe or not. Well done. And we've all got muted. Oh, oh. sorry, I left myself oh. muted. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I thought it's I was not on my like own last end. week. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. Here we go. Yeah, from uh, from waifu. I'm not biased, but. Um... Yeah, if she hadn't yeah. relied on the screen when the child was much younger, she'd have built a relationship based on genuine trust and connection, which might have made her daughter less likely to lie. Yeah, yeah. The the, the screen was for me. It was it was it was a barrier between them two. Like mm. she might have felt more connected because she could literally see the world through her daughter's eyes, but she wasn't doing the things that or experiencing the things as a as a parent. The screen is a child. barrier, TCG. Yeah. The screen is the yeah. barrier. We're, we're back here again. <laughs> but she was literally, yeah, she 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 was literally just living her daughter's life through the screen, or well, not, well, not like experience. You know, she she was she wasn't actively involved. Like it's mm. her dad, I think, who's pushing her on the swing. At one point, uh, yeah, the granddad. But, yeah, and it's yeah, it's. She she only starts actively getting involved once she puts the screen away, and like, I think it's like for seven years, or I don't know if it actually mm. specify. I I just assumed it was like seven years or so, but um, you know that that's. But it was those formative years, that early connection that was that was lost, that mm. time that was lost, and then yeah, as I say sort of when, when that when that trust is broken, um, when she does the round robin, 
it almost sort of like reverts back to the way it was before the um uh, when she was a little girl and 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 it and there is all and, and it is quite deceptive as well it's not out in the open bef- as as it was when she was younger it's it's like under the pillow it's put it back in the box you know, it's, you know pull it out and have a quick look and see what she's doing mm. yeah, yeah it's yeah it becomes very shady after that it's uh, i kind of you know it made me think of the dark knight as well it's just oh you something, mean the old it's yeah Mm. it's too much power it's it's there's mm. too much power it's intoxicating it's intoxicating but that that's I the know, thing yeah i, I think totally you hit agree. on something is that you 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 wouldn't need to use it or you'd be less tempted to use it if you had the sort of unmediated relationship built up mm. that was genuine and i think that is the trap for all of us all of us mm-hmm. like um i try and limit my screen time okay. I fail constantly. I'm knackered. Likewise. Um, I'm knackered. When I'm doing the cooking in the evening, I like to just like, that could be nice, fun, chatty time. But I'll be honest, I I love to slap on my headphones and catch up with Lotus Boys then. And I've got yeah, that I'm... little routine. And yeah, I know I should make more time <laughs> to not, but it's difficult. It is difficult. Mm. Yeah. Um, got a question from Maverick Hunter. Another way this could have gone was how did the mother know someone wasn't looking on another end? Yeah, stuff like this always gives her yeah. a look. Through. Yeah, totally. Um, that stuff would leak again. Scrumps prism stream. This stuff is not private. Mm-hmm. Behave accordingly. Um, did she? Yeah. What? What? What did she select for the GDPR preferences? Oh, there's there's some service we. Some IT worker in Bangalore just turning up for the shower sessions. <laughs> Speaking of which, did you see that story going around today about the Amazon Fresh uh, shops that were the AI stores? You didn't need uh, any cashiers because the AI uh, tracked what you purchased through the camera. Oh, yeah, they've been, they've been going around mm-hmm. for a while, they have. Yeah, yeah, there's no AI. It was a thousand Indians working remotely. What? It was a thousand Indians. Shut up! No way. <laughs> yeah. Are you? So... No. Way. Yeah. Look, Doctor no. Prepper's on it. It was Indians. No. It was a hundred percent Rishi powered. Wow. <laughs> AI, all Indians. That's what it meant. Oh God. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that broke me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, that, that's not an April Fool. Serious. So this was today. It came out. That was today. Look for it. Wow, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> oh my days! Wow, All Indians. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh dear. Uh, oh yeah. Look, Amazon Fresh Indian workers. <laughs> Amazon's <laughs> just walking. <more gags. laughs> <laughs> no. Suddenly no. you're wondering why the receipt asked you to send Bobs and Vagin. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> man, no way. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh, oh, no. Anyway. Amazon's yeah. Just Walk Out technology has a secret ingredient. Roughly a thousand <laughs> workers in India who review what you pick up, set down and walk out of its stores. Wow. <laughs> About 700 of every 1,000 Just Walkout sales had to be reviewed by Amazon's team in India in 2022. <laughs> Internally, Amazon wanted just 50 out of every 1,000. Oh, Jesus. Wow, they only wanted 50. They ended up having to do 700. Uh, they just there are a lot them, of them, you know. You might as well get the bulk discount. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. And, and an Amazon spokesperson disputed that claim in a statement to Business Insider, saying that the team in India mostly helps train the model that the company used for Just Walkout. So, in other words, they're training the Indians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from a, a oh, limit, wow. a limited bit of machine learning that could, in fact, be true. That could, in fact, be a thousand, <laughs> a thousand <laughs> Indians. Oh, uh, building the doing the correction to the models like this is how you do it in an iterative model however it could also just be that they've employed a thousand indians 
Oh, we love it. Oh, imagine that. Yes. Oh, oh dear. Oh, I shouldn't cool. have brought this up, but I found again. it too funny. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Adam. Love, sorry. That's, that, 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 that has made it. Come my again. Year. <laughs> oh, dear. We're getting wow. into the silly hours here. Oh, dear. Yeah. Right. Apologies, apologies. Wait. Oh no. <laughs> oh, they're testing out an Audi and Dollar Central as well. Slumdog Millionaire or whatever. <laughs> oh, Who dear. would win? Oh, we definitely passed into silly season. Apologies, folks. Apologies. Okay, we'll move away from the. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just. We're just going to move away from it. So, Archangel. <laughs> Intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? That really bums me out, right? Because at my local library, right, they've got this technology. Well, I, I thought it was technology. It's probably Indians now, right? Where you literally just slap the books on this machine, right? You don't have to scan them or anything, and it tells you what, what the books are. Clearly, oh, I'm doubting it now. <laughs> I think it's Indians. Indians, man. Maybe. There's a little one hidden in there. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a little oompa loompa. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I mean, they've got enough. Uh, to be fair, India have got enough people to do a job like that, let's be honest. <coughs> oh, my oh. goodness. Yeah, Amazon has. I'm gonna. <coughs> right, that's it for me. AI is just all Indians now. So Amazon has spent years promoting its all Indians based checkout free. Just walk out. Uh, uh, nah, nah, it's lovely. Hell anyway. nine thousand. Hell deep nine thousand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nine thousand. I'm sorry, I cannot do that for you right now. <laughs> now we're getting demonetized. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Let's yep. be moving on. Oh dear. Oh, not hell nine thousand. Delhi, 9,000. Ah, oh, never mind. Yeah. Okay, all right. We'll move on. There's a Delhi, Dally joke in there. We'll move on. Anyway, right. <laughs> Scores. <laughs> Scores. All right. Yeah, I think we should do this with a a ranking and a scores for the episode. How about it? I think so. Let's go. All right. Chat, let's have your rankings. If you want to do a score per episode, that is fine too. Thank you for sticking around for us being very silly. And we will now go. Oh, yeah. We should not be doing this. It's oh, not the Patrick, around. Patrick, oh, you're, you're encouraging me now. You're encouraging me now to do my phone jacker impression. <laughs> hello, you want to be... oh, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hello, my name is. Hello, I'm calling from Internet Service Providings. I want to check to see if your Internet Service Providing is uh, providing you with a fast internet connection. Providings. You want to know it's how much? Iranian you... dude does that, isn't it? Uh, for only uh, 42, the first month is 42 pounds 99, then it's uh, 27 pounds 99, then 82 pounds 99 for the next seven months. You get free oh. ring ding. Okay, I guess I'll start it off. But it's cool. <laughs> it's late, I'm done. <laughs> All right, apologies. Before we do that, I do have to say, and I'm, I'm so sorry, uh, someone sent this earlier. <laughs> I won't dox you. Um, I, I can't remember if you put yourself on here. But we have had someone make my day, do my request, and deliver the meme. Yes. He's only gone and done it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. It's so good. Absolute oh. champ. Actually, you've made you've made that public. So thank you, Dollface. You absolute Chad. I'm so happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You had to also you you chose like the shadiest picture of her to use as well. Are you not a Lenora Critchlow appreciator? <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> Absolutely. <Okay. laughs> Dollhouse has won won the stream. Fantastic. That makes me so happy. Oh god. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, gosh. Right. I'm go Okay, I'm going to retweet that, but first we should round off the stream because Super Nanny is going to be raging over this. Um, Murgu, would you like to kick us off with the rankings and scores, please? Hey, my top ranking is for Shut Up and Dance. I give it a solid nine. It is... mm. 
that twist and just how creepy that kid ended up being. Number two would be Archangel and mm-hmm. with a solid eight, eight and a half. Um, and then in third place, uh, White Bear, which was too predictable for me, but I'd recommend it for most people. So a seven. Respectable and quite close together, I'm noticing. We're not having a massive gap in quality here. No, no. Very nice, very nice. Um, TCG, how oh, about yourself? I can't, I can't look at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I take it off? No, no, keep it there. Keep it there. Right, okay, I'm not looking at the screen. Right, okay, so... Um... I'll switch it to a different one for <laughs> you. <laughs> God, proper. I can't breathe. I can't, I can't breathe. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh dear. Right. I apologize. Scores. God. Right. In third place, uh, third episode. Archangel. We'll give that, we'll give that, we'll give that a nine uh, out of 12 burgers. It was a cool, cool video. Uh, yeah, cool episode. I actually appreciate it a little bit more now to be spoken about it as I tend to do when we do these streams. Um, but I, I still maintain that it made me feel very uncomfortable uh, because of the sort of just just because of the perspective i was i could i could see myself mm. being put in you know I, I i defend the mother's actions but i don't uh to the point where checking up on her kid that initial time as a teenager after that she'd have just nipped it in the bud and had that conversation with her and as you know any normal parent would um then it would be for me in second place uh oh god what's it called i can't bloody think of it now um should've yeah, that one. That one. Yep. 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 That one. <laughs> that one. Mm. Uh, I'd probably give this one a, a 10. Mm. I really enjoyed it. I did really enjoy it. Um, and again, it, like like the uh, like Archangel, it makes you really sort of ask yourself questions. And, and, and I really sort of appreciated that about this episode the fact that i sort of went away after watching it thinking about it like in more detail like it just sort of almost like reviewing you know sort of reviewing it over over my head and being like you know was that is, is that is, is that okay is that is that the right thing to do is that something that, that that would be moral and just and you know what would the parents think what would the family what would the friends think you know it, it I, I really appreciate you know it was it was really cool that it mm. it made me think like that but hands down, <clears throat> the winner uh, was Shut Up and Dance for me. That was hands down the, the best one of, of the bunch. I thought, you know, it was a bit of a thrill ride from start to finish. The twist at the end was just fantastic. Um, the, the way it just made me emotionally change my perception of this, uh, of, um, of Kenny, uh, from this sort of like helpless you know, lose a kind of simp, you know, just this meek person who made a, uh, who made a DSP esque mistake only to find out that actually mm-hmm. it was far worse than that. Um, yeah. The, the way it was, that it made me just lose sympathy for him immediately was, I, I, I've, I've never felt that like that before. Um, mm. yeah. 11, 11 burgers out of 12. I, and I'm docking nice. it a point because I'm 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 docking it a point because we didn't see Kenny kill the other uh, nonce. <laughs> yeah, it might have been nice to see a little more. Could have been, could have been interesting. I mean, that one they really filled their time up. Like I'm still not looking at the screen. They had so much. To, okay, all right. Um, <laughs> no, no. The order is okay. A little little bit of a difference in the order here. Um. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. As for me, uh, okay. I su- this surprised me, but I think I I now move White Bear to the bottom. Um, I really like it. I think there's some added complexity that maybe smudged up the morality a bit, <clears throat> even though it's really interesting. 
sorry, um, my throat is so parched in this. <coughs> Excuse me, folks, sorry. Um, and I think it struggled to fill its time. I think some of the repeating clips were possibly just to make the broadcast length. Um, and so for that reason, I would drop it down a little bit. Um, the story just isn't as tight, but I still give that a solid nine. Absolutely my jam. Um, and I like the brevity. Uh, we get to um, next. I honestly give Archangel and Shut Up and Dance the same score. Uh, for me, they're 11s. Gosh, are they 11s? I think they're 11s. Like, emotionally, they delivered so much. Shut Up and Dance was a stronger emotional experience, but I found Archangel just so much more thought-provoking. Um, so many great touches. Like, we haven't even said that at the transitions for the kid aging were done so well, especially the first one when the kid's on the, on the swing and is sort of three on the one swing, then she goes back and then she comes forward again and seamlessly she's nine. Um, it's such a great transition. Jodie Foster, brilliant directing in it. Lovely little touch. Um, so yeah, I, I land those somewhere between a 10 and a half and an 11. But I absolutely love them. They're cream of the crop for me. Um, so that would be my order. Um, oh, gosh, we've got to tell you what. I'll ask you guys if you have another Black Mirror episode you would recommend for people who enjoyed this, who want to look around. Uh, think of that. I'm just going to address Super Chat. I'll just come in. Thank you so much, Patrick, about and dropping five pounds and saying you've got the opposite of a recommendation. So a warning. When Evil Lurks is the most overrated movie of last year. Watched it on Friday and I'm still peed off. Yeah, interesting. I saw that Ryan Hollinger had praised it. Um, well, I think he praised it. I didn't watch the video. He, he did say it was very scary, but I haven't watched it myself. That is disappointing. Um, but thank you for the warning. We like a warning around here. Um, we had a recommendation for Late Night with the Devil, and we were going to do that this week. This is why the announcement of the Black Mirror episodes came out quite late, by the way, is we were going to do Late Night with the Devil, but I'd got confused and I thought it was available. It's not available for us Brits until late April. So probably going to do it in uh, May if we can. But uh, thank you very much. Generous super chat to give us a warning. Cheers. Um, lads, do you have any more Black Mirror recommendations for everyone? I did. I did watch Beyond the Sea. Is it Beyond the Sea? Beyond uh, with, the Sea, yes, that's yeah, uh, with Josh there's Hartnett. someone quite, oh, who was that, TCG? Uh, Josh Hartnett. I've never heard of him, but it sounds strapping. <laughs> well, I, 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 I did recommend it to you for, just purely on that fact. And it's also got Aaron Paul in it, uh, for those who don't know, it's Jesse Pinkman from uh, from Breaking Bad. Uh, really good casting. Uh, it was all right. It was all right. I mean, I, I think someone mentioned it earlier on um, at, at the beginning of the chat. Uh, in the stream that they that they watched that one and absolutely loved it. I can't remember who it was. If you're still here, let yourself let yourself be known. Um, I thought it was all right. Adam Loss Horror, I think it was. Um, I thought it was all right, but ah, man, I don't think it needed to be 80 minutes. Mm. Ah, I really don't. That that could probably be its own. Um, that that could probably be its own stream though, because again, because of the length of time. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that was, um, it could have been more compact. Um, I haven't really checked out many of the other ones though. Um, there was, I've literally only ever seen four episodes, uh, of, of Black Mirror. Never watched it up until now. Do you think you'll check out more? Does this I might, a taste? yeah, I might do. I might do. Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, I suppose, I suppose. Okay. All right. And Mergu, I think this was an early encounter. Um, can you recommend another episode or um, have you not seen uh, enough? I need to watch them again. I've only watched a couple episodes and I only vaguely remember them. Um, the one that I really remember is Bandersnatch. So, yes. 
and that was an yeah. experience. But that one's <laughs> that one's hard to review. <laughs> it really is. True. I I did ponder should we should we try and do a Bandersnatch somehow? But how would we? That is, of course, guys. If you don't know the um, it's a choose your own adventure episode, and literally you can you can make choices in it. It's amazing. Um, all right. So the obvious recommendation has come through. Dr. Prepper's already said it, the entire history of you. Um, that that was uh, the one that had the movie rights bought up for it. But um, that had the movie rights bought up for it, but that's not gone anywhere, unfortunately. But it's the first attempt to deal with these ideas, with this subject matter. Um, so I won't recommend that if, although you're welcome to, Dr. Prepper. But if you're wanting to bridge out a little bit, I've got the list of episodes here. I'll say if you Black Mirror covers an extremely broad range of tones. Um, I mean, mind blowing. There's just bizarre stuff in there. Striking Vipers is it being very light, dramatic and weird. Um, a lot of people fell in love with San Junipero because it's a little bit. Uh, trendy topics, but I would also say I remember was very moving. If you want just scary, pure scary, I would say that Dan Trachtenberg's episode from season three, Playtest, is very good. That's maybe trying a bit too hard to be scary, but I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and but for something really unique, it's already come up from someone. But hang the DJ, hang the DJ from season. Let me just check four. Really good, really unique, um, and I'd I'd massively. Oh wow. Okay, sorry, I was checking the list of episodes. Um, gosh, right. So those would be recommendations. If you want scary, play test. If you want something really unique and kind of funky and weird with relevant commentary, hang the DJ. Um, if you just want what I think is the best episode overall, it has to be the Christmas special, White Christmas. Um, and if you enjoy that, then try season four's Black Museum. I hope that sounds interesting. But uh, <laughs> the Enriab has dropped yeah. 200 <laughs> Jesus Christ! You absolute mad lad! What are you doing? Yeah, we're wait, we're wait, wait for the uh, follow up post, which, which where he goes. Oh shit! Too many zeros. Yeah, <laughs> dude. <laughs> refund, refund. Twenty would have been oh, very right. generous, but thank you so much. I know you're an extremely generous supporter of this channel. You go on, you go on uh, absolute rampages. <laughs> uh, very good, Phil. Um, this might seem like a snub, but I've just seen a question. I need to answer it. For Dollface, no, Dan Trachtenberg, I do not believe is related to Michelle Trachtenberg, but you're a fellow Buffy appreciator, and we like that. Uh, the Enria for £200 saying, thanks, really enjoying the Blockbuster series of videos and commentaries. Looking forward to your next project. Thank you so much. I have I... to say, the Blockbuster stuff is some of your best work today. <clears throat> I'm mm -hmm. bloody loving it. As as someone who again who's old enough to remember blockbusters and enjoying it, <laughs> like like talking about the talking about the experience just really really brings it home for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, keep I'm I'm looking forward to, mm -hmm. to part four. You'll be doing now. Uh, part four is on Saturday. There are seven parts in the series. It's weird. It gets weirder. Um, we need we need to let the blockbusters <laughs> Twitter account know about this series because that is that, that's still active. <laughs> no, don't I slagged them off. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't go right now we must let them know <laughs> um yeah thank you thanks it's it, it, people might say it's pedantic detail but that that's what you come for i i had so much fun researching it and taking it to a weird mm. place um also i i i had fun involving friends there was a really cool um store announcement dude uh in episode two oh. i seem to recall <laughs> Stop yeah here. you're taking it no you, no but seriously honestly it's m m so good it's so good your series like yeah, I, know, I know it's been a long time coming but it has been well worth the wait um oh, thank on. you keep, i, keep I it going. keep I, it going i will i will i mean i honestly guys you don't know how um how nervous i was putting that out 
I really, I, I was nervous putting the blockbuster stuff out and there's still more to come. So you might still hate it. Um, I was really nervous about the commentaries as well. It, it sort of helped that people voted. Um, so I knew I was delivering films that they were interested in. Um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, there's a couple of randomers in there. I think episode episode five is The Exorcist and then episode six. I think I've already said it elsewhere, but I, I gave myself the challenge of doing the Thai version of Shutter, um, which I, I was a really interesting challenge. So hopefully you'll all like that too. But anyway, I'm <laughs> rambling because it's late. Uh, the Henry had 200 pounds, incredibly generous. And honestly, uh, you've been super generous to the project. Um, that said, I think episode three, there is a little Easter egg. Like you spotted some Easter eggs in episode two, but there's a there's an Easter egg in episode three. I thought you might catch. So if you if you spot it, let me let me know in a comment on that video. But there's there's one I was thinking of. There's one I was thinking of you uh, when I put it in. Not that I hide anything in my video, lads. It's all straightforward. <laughs> there is nothing hidden. There's no no extra commentary in there. It's all straightforward. All right. Well, we, we have gone way over the three hour mark. Uh, <laughs> Super Nanny will be revving up a chainsaw. Um, so I I better bring it to a close. Uh, that is, again, I'm, I'm a bit blown away. That's an amazing donation. My goodness. Um, right. So um, we have come Black Mirror. We have recommendations for it. We have our reviews and we need to discuss what comes next week. Now, all going well, we will discuss another British series called Inside Number Nine. Yes. I need to confirm. That's a good response. I need we to confirm haven't... with this wonderful panel which episodes we're doing. Um, it is an, it's an amazing show. I hope to convince you. If you've never heard of this, guys, Inside Number Nine is an absolute blooming treat. Um, with an even, wi even wider tonal range than Black Mirror. We've covered it before. Yeah, we, we covered one episode from yeah. it, um, which is great. So mm. I am going to... Oh, Devante, Super Night, you, this is this is the deep law. I'll have to let chat fill you in on Super Nanny. Um, but yeah, um, we'll do Inside Number Nine, but I do have to... I do have to warn, my schedule for a April is chaotic. Unfortunately, I want to be here every Thursday. I can't guarantee it. Something might come up. Now, I've made provision, so you will not be without something on Thursdays. But if something goes wrong, don't worry. I will set something up. Uh, there'll be something to enjoy, something new to enjoy. And we'll try and get back on schedule as soon as I can. But just, I have a very... Um, chaotic schedule this april so i will try and um stick to it but just i'm forewarning there could be uh unscheduled things so uh that is everything i will get the announcement of the episodes for inside number nine out to you asap possibly even tomorrow uh to give you more forewarning um so all all that's left is to once again uh thank Everyone who's been so generous tonight, I really appreciate it. You guys have been wonderful. Uh, thank you, TCG and Mergate. Pleasure as You're always. Welcome. Thank you very much. And thank you, thank you, chat, and thank you, Dollface, for my favourite meme of the oh. channel. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, chat, absolutely, chat. In fact, guys, I've got a request. On this video, give me the episodes of Inside Number Nine you want to see. Help, help, help put the suggestions out there. So that, that is it. All right. We have, we've done everything and we are right in the bad books of Super Nanny. So I will now sign off once again. Thank you, folks. Thank